Hello. Hello. <laughs> and welcome to Anarcho Agony Aunt Office Edition with Mariam and Rowan. Welcome to our humble abode. <laughs> Sorry, we're really trying to keep the act, but as you can tell, it's not happening. We're going to start smoking and drinking, and you'll realize yeah. we're not as together. Do you as know we <laughs> dress? <laughs> no, we figured, you know, like. Last one was all cash and in the pool and kind of people were also uh, criticizing our uh, production values. So um, we figure we'll step it up a, a bit. Though, not a single one of you sent the donation. So what the hell, guys? Not a single one of you. Yeah, what are we meant to do, man? Like, we're Seriously. spending a lot of money on tiskies yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is kind of not okay. Yeah, if you want good value, put your money where your desires are. <laughs> also, on a more serious note, thank you so much, everyone, who have like shared our content because mm -hmm. the last episode kind of blew up. Well, in our terms, anyway. Yeah, to us, it was a really big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on BreadTube, you know, got like what something silly like six hundred upvotes. Our last episode is now over three thousand views, which is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So many minutes watched, and so yeah, we're extremely thankful. That is flipping huge for us. That yeah. is what motivates us, and it does seem like majority of people are into what we're doing, which is huge. Amazing, yeah. So, uh, on with the show? Yeah, yeah, let's so, go. Um, this week we got a few questions that were quite similar. Yeah. So we're going to kind of, we don't want to end up recording for four hours again with loads of breaks like you had last time where it was a bit um, disjointed. We want to try and get it done in one show and also give credit to everything. But since they, there were some similarities, I'm going to be, well, we're going to be reading out the first three kind of in a batch. Together, yeah, yeah. because, yeah, and also guys, ugh, not to be a bit annoying, but like, do look through our archive mm. uh, whenever you're posting a uh, question because like as much as we want to address all of them like um it, it is becoming a bit of an issue where we have to be like hey we already covered this we already covered this and um yeah maybe when one day you know we get enough money so that you know it's worth men like you know answering every single one and that's fine but, but the problem is for people that watch all of our videos it becomes quite repetitive if we're giving the same buttons mm -hmm. again and again so yeah um we will be giving shorter answers on ones which we, where we basically just say, here's what's specific to what you said, and here's links to prior videos that deal with the same thing. Totally. Like, if you do have a specific bit of information, we will always address that. We will never, like, say, <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> also, like, it's the, the ring light. Uh, this is my amazing Don't mention the ring all. light. Oh, sorry. Mention oh, the fact oh. that we're naturally just beautiful. Yes, sorry. We're n the, the, the natural beauty oozes heat, so we're going to be... <laughs> So I think it might be a bit of a sweaty edition, we're even, we're even, maybe even more than the, yeah. the hot tub one. Also, I'm wearing tights and it's like 25 degrees out, oh, but which is hot in the UK for those of you yeah. who don't know. But you know, that's commitment. It's oh. commitment. I mean, that actually is still kinks. You can't tell, but you know, I know. Well, we all know now. We all know now. I'm, I'm almost upset we don't have like teeny tiny like glasses. Shit, I forgot my teeny tiny glasses that are actually massive. <laughs> I was like, I was going to wear like a bow tie and all of that stuff. Yeah, but, like, but we, but we work much. with what we've got. Yeah, literally. And we're also thinking, even when we would, even if we would get like donations, where you think we'd actually spend on equipment? Hell no, we're spending it on clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you want to buy us some clothes. <laughs> Just anything. Anything. <laughs> nice. So, okay. So the first one of the first, so I'm doing, we're doing a batch of three, but the first one is quite a long one. So bear with me, mm -hmm. good friends, and thank you again so much for sending in such a detailed question. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it. Let's go. Let's go. Hey girls, I love what you both do. Thanks for doing it. Thank you. So I don't know how to do this. Please forgive me if this gets long. I don't know if you answer your questions in video format or not, but if you do, feel free to condense this. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's extra work. <laughs> <Literally>. <laughs> I'm in my early 30s and my romantic life has always been non-existent. I've had one weird, long, friends with benefits type partnership and that has been my only real involvement with a woman. I don't know what I'm doing or where to go from where I am now that that's over. Or where to go from where I am now that's over. Dating terrifies me. I've been fatalistic about my prospects for most of my adult life for several reasons. First, I have been socially isolated for a long time, living on the margins of society as a neat, not in education, employment or training. During that time, I pursued personal hobbies and educated myself because I didn't feel like I could adjust and reintegrate into society or that it would benefit me to try. To add to this, I'm back to living with my mom in the fucking suburbs for financial reasons. As an anarchist, I feel really out of place. There's nothing to do and nowhere to go nearby. It's impossible to relate to the people here and their bourgeois interests. 
but they've no exit public there's no exit public transportation sucks and i don't have a car i feel like no girl in this city would ever be interested in me because of my non-conformity and low social status i downloaded the app happen just to see and not a single girl has liked my profile ever month it wasn't too surprised since i'm being straightforward about being vegan anti-capitalist anti-work and all that and they're normals as far as i could tell Previous to that, I tried OkCupid and I received some interest, but again from normals only, or women that I found unattractive, and I didn't end up connecting with them. I'd like to meet someone with whom I could really connect, ideally someone who is quite cerebral like me, or engaged in activism, and who could get me to start becoming more involved in direct action, etc. I feel like I'm not going to find such a girl around here, for sure, and probably not anywhere if I'm being honest. But let's say I solved a transportation issue and could get out of the suburbs, how should I go about finding a girl who might be interested in someone like me? I have nothing to show for myself other than the fact that I'm well-educated, moral, and lucid. Are there girls who would pay attention to someone like that? And if they exist, would it be a deal-breaker if I live at my mum's place, at least for now? I'm not a big baby, I was away from this house for 10 years, I know how to take care of myself, but I know how it looks from an outsider's perspective when you're living with your mum in your 30s. I mean, there's a lot to unpack. You should yeah, yeah, should yeah. Try it once. Sorry? I, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm ready to, but we can also put them in batch and then sort of come back to them. Or I feel like we'll miss the detail. I think we should just launch straight You're in. okay with that? Yeah. yeah? Okay, dogs. All right, let's do this. Right. Okay. So, um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Again, thank you so much for opening up to us. And it does sound like, you know, you're in a fairly desperate situation, etc. However, quite a few things in that question I either disagree with or like I think um, could be, um, you are sort of in the vortex of kind of feeling, feeling sorry for yourself as such. So, uh, first of all, um, and that will tie in in some of the future questions that we're going to get, but um, uh, the whole like, oh, you know, people are just normies. Not everyone posts their political opinions on dating apps. I know I don't. Like, I mean, really, because be and the way that you sort of project yours, it's intimidating, man. Someone is like, oh, I'm like vegan, anti-capitalist, like anarcho, whatever. Like, people might just find that a bit a bit too much. As well as, you can change people's opinion. Like, you can change people's political opinions. So, yeah. Yeah, I want to deal with all three of those points, sure. actually, because yeah. I had similar feelings. So the first one, calling people normies, to me, makes you not seem likable. Totally. Sorry. Absolutely. Like, I know what you're saying. I also like to date people who are political. That's fine. But you're not better than them. Nope. No, and that's an attitude that I would not swipe right on. No, like I don't. Know don't what date said. normies. Like, yeah, all right. I don't know what you said about what you're interested in. Like whether like I'm interested in political girls. Fine, fine thing to put. Like fine to say what you're interested in. But yeah, just referring to people as normies. Yeah, like... it, it it comes across as a little bit more righteous than thou. Totally, which is not like... an attractive attitude, and that ties into Mariam's third point, which is that. Every single person I've ever been with, I have like in some way like improved their politics and they have in some way improved mine. Yeah. And that's what makes it work. And to write someone off because they haven't like read the same texts as you or had the Zines. same perspective, like it's yeah, that's like yeah, you can make people more political if you want to and if they want to. And it's I, to me it's more about whether someone's receptive to being politicized. Totally. Than... And also what were you born with these politics? Precisely. No, you weren't. You're like, okay, you educated yourself eventually. To, to be that and um, what has you know what has that done for you like I mean I don't know like it's just you still seem to be like a fairly desperate situation as such so like I don't yeah. know that sounds bad but like I mean basically like you you seem to be a super righteous whereas people that perhaps haven't necessarily like fell into the hellhole that sometimes a political scene can be you know they they I don't know they they maybe are, are, are sometimes you know achieve more in different ways and then and then there is a space for them to learn all those good yeah. things you know and hopefully you can be that person for them um yeah my politics are constantly changing and growing and becoming better i think like it's not yeah and definitely like I, i've dated like people that were yeah had totally just liberal politics and yeah. like like were totally into police and charity work and all of that stuff and i remember we used to have arguments of, over it and then like they met a few of my friends they went to a few demonstrations they kind of saw how things really are and they've opened up for it and now they're like more ACAP than i am sometimes yeah. and like as was that i wanted to be a fucking cop when i was 15 because i thought that was the way to help people you know what i mean like and I, now look at like, yeah, you would have you would have swiped left with me as a normie and it's like i mean hopefully you swiped left because i was 15. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, just maybe try and be a little less condescending in your approach, especially since, yeah, like you say, you said one of the things you want is a girl to encourage you to get involved in more direct, direct action, which makes it sound like for all that you might consider yourself X, Y, and Z politics, you're not actually doing all that much, which is fine. But then maybe this girl who's doing direct action is like, what a fucking normie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, on your middle point about the vegan, anti-capitalist, blah, 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 being intimidating, that's true, it can be intimidating, but to me it can also be like, is this someone who's gonna, like, I was a, look, I was a vegan for two years, and I fucking hated <laughs> vegan culture, and people that talk about being vegan, like, fucking hell. Yeah. Like, if you want to meet someone who wants to talk about being vegan, go on fucking Facebook and join, like, the vegan groups, you know, like, that would yeah, make me think. Yeah, don't put that on your yeah. profile. It's like, well, unless you really, I mean, I dated someone who was like, because I, I fish sometimes when I'm in Russia, you know, I go like, if you're going to fish, like, I'm not going to date you anymore. So that that will happen. Well, I kind of didn't stay for that long. Anyways. Yeah. But, um, so like, it's fine to have your politics and it's fine if you put your principles out there, but be aware that that might not be seen as like, ooh, cool, political rad guy. As much as like, this guy is super like, Condescending. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So also, and this is a point that we keep repeating over and over again. But because I now have a bit of experience with like these, uh, these you know, dating apps and all that stuff, I cannot stress enough how important pictures are. Oh my god! Like seriously, invest in some good pictures. Ask a few friends to take a few of you. Filter them. Make them cute. So many people that, as you know, we repeat now ourselves. Also, so many people that I know could be so gorgeous. Like just make kind of shitty pictures and like. I don't get that much. And the other way around, people that are like, you know, maybe don't have this status, they're typically gorgeous features. They're, they're, you know, their confidence or just yeah. in general, like they have really, I know, beautifully set up pictures. And I'm like, yeah, I'm yeah. into this. Yeah, well, I guess we don't know what your pictures are, but like, if you don't seem approachable, people aren't going to approach you. Yeah. And the way in which it sounds like you've written yourself and described yourself and the way in which it sounds like you're judging other people. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, yeah, have a think about your pictures. We have previous videos where we talk about aesthetic, where we talk about what to put on a Tinder profile. Yeah. Literally in the last show, we talk about that. So now to do with more a bit of a practicality stuff of things. So look, this is completely subjective and personal, but I will say for me, someone living with her parents is, an, is like a deal breaker. I know, no, completely. And the reason why I'm saying this and the reason why I'm confident in saying this is because I was in the same position. And you know what? I either squatted or fucking did medical trials to fucking be able to rent or stuff like that, you know? So, like, there are ways to get out of that. And I'm so now sounding smug or whatnot, but, like, I don't know. Like, I think there are opportunities out there as such. It's, yeah, especially if you were to move to a bigger city or whatnot to, to like, not be there as such. So I think it is a bit of a closing where is he cycle. Based, though? Is he based in the UK? Because, like, yeah, squatting is possible. I mean, it depends on where you are, right? Yes, for sure. And okay. also, like, I don't know, uh, if you can... Because I've just, I'm so smug these days. No, but like, if you can pass driving license, like, that would be amazing. Yeah. And if you can have, like, it, the cars are well cheap these days. And yeah, as I say, there, there are, you know, there are um, extras work. There's like, well, I mean, there's so many, there are like gig apps. I mean, and I went through all of these things. That's why I'm saying that there are, they actually exist and you can actually under the zero hours contracts. That sort of stuff. Like it's all terrible and capitalism it's, sucks. Yes, yes. Like we cannot stress this if enough. If it's like, like a line for you, and if you're realizing yeah. that girls don't want to come back to your house, it depends what's more important to you. Basically, I had like chunks that big, like cut out of my my vagina for like a couple of thousands of pounds three times. You know, because I was desperate. You know, so like I'm saying this literally because like I. And that money then helped me to like get to a better situation. Mm. So I mean. Yeah, as a neat, I don't know, maybe you just like power through for a year in a job and I'll, like just like get yourself out of that situation. I yeah. would say for me, like, I, I wouldn't date a guy that lives with their parents. Okay, like, well, I see, I did. And the maybe if it was Prince William. Well, <laughs> well the, the, the parents' house with was the Buckingham queen, Palace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, you know, it's a house like that yeah. big. Well, 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 this is the thing. Like, I was um, casually seeing someone that lived with their mum and... It worked because they came back to my place. But because I was casually dating them and we weren't like in a relationship yet, like fuck did I want to meet their parents? Like he was a lovely boy. We like had a really nice time together, but like I've like, you know, slept with you three times. I'm not going to say hi to your mum and dad yet. It's too intense. Like it's and like yeah, it's like maybe normal for you, but it would it would put me off and I would end up having them only come to my house, which it creates a awkward yeah. dynamic again. Because again, we lived like quite far away from each other and it was like very much the power situation was not good and being late twenties, early thirties, and having to like hump next door to one's yeah, parents, it's, it's just like, like that's the only good thing about like stopping being a teenager. Oh, there many good things, but like, <laughs> yeah, not hearing my boyfriend's parents watch The Simpsons while I'm having sex next door is a pro. 
Yeah. I mean, maybe he's got a huge house and you have your own wing of it, in which case it's a different situation, <laughs> I guess. Like, and again, purely subjective, la la, but you've asked us and I'm just giving you my opinion. Like, yeah. Again, we're not experts, never, never said we are, but like from our, from my subjective opinion, mm. that's all. And it's also because I have like worked so fucking hard to get out of my parents' place. But I mean, like saying that like, if you don't have the opportunity, I'm not saying you won't find a girl. I'm saying that you will probably not find a girl that wants to come back to your house. In which case, yeah, being able to drive, being able to put in the, like if you haven't got a job or whatever, being able to put in the hours and committing to staying at her place or I don't know, maybe rent a motel for the night or whatever. Like there are other ways of doing it if you don't have the capacity financially or I don't know, mentally or something to leave your parents' house. I'm it's also really interested, what are you educated in? Since you're saying, you know, you spent a lot of your time in your 20s to like learning and you're like well educated and that's what you're saying. And, like perhaps there are ways for you to send like really cool like trivia to, to your, you know, to people that perhaps hopefully you'll finally match and match with yeah. and that sort of stuff you know like there's nothing quite like someone sending me an Adorno quote I'm like Ugh. are you serious <laughs> depends man that would be a hard left swipe from me <laughs> I still don't know which one is which because I use the right X is good. and uh, yeah oh, fucking boomer <laughs> <laughs> so yeah left okay, is bad X. right is good okay gotcha we I mean I okay but like they're gorgeous and they're like clever as fuck like come on Come on. If the first thing they say to me is sending me an Adorno quote. Depends on the Adorno quote, but there's so many good Depends ones. Depends on the quote. <laughs> <laughs> if it's an Adorno quote saying, hey babe, do you want to get lunch? Then I'd accept it. <laughs> Citation Adorno. That'd be funny. Three most interesting facts about you. Actually, yeah. I've been utilizing that one. It's been interesting. Yeah, it's good. And if everyone's just saying really boring things. Yeah. Like, and mine are really interesting. I'm like, I'm so much better. <laughs> is one of yours that you're a sex therapist? <laughs> N uh, uh, no, because that's what? like, what? It, you know what, the reason why, because like people then would just like, I assume that I'm only on Tinder for those reasons. Oh yeah, or like, or like when we went to that pub and that guy was like, oh, oh yeah, 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 super yeah. Creepy oh yeah, hence, hence you're gonna like want to be with them or yeah. something. No. Yeah, no, we've done our research, we don't need more yeah. case studies. Yeah, um, okay. Are there any other I think that's, that's me covered. Hang on, let me just have a quick scan. Yeah, I feel like no girl in the city would ever be interested in me because of my non-conformity. <laughs> that's not true. But if you're identifying as a non-conformist, that's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, look, we're both, like, political, but, like... Yeah. Yeah, what makes me like someone is, like, yes, they have to have good politics, but that's not enough. But, like, they have to just... be funny and charming and interested in me. And so far, you've said that... They're all normies, all girls you find unattractive. Is there anyone you've been interested in, actually, their personality or anything? Yeah, it's a lot about you rather than, like, yeah. like what you're into. But also, like, um, I don't know, it just really reeks of me as, like, I'm such an individual, you know, like, I'm, I'm just, yeah. Yeah, it's so very self-pitying. Well, not like, just pitying, but also self-grandizing at both. the same yeah. time. <laughs> Which is impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think, I doubt it's because you're not in education, employment or training. I would think about how you're coming across on these dating apps and what you're coming across as not political and cool, but that's great. I believe you that you are, but likable. Also, like you talk about your so you know socioeconomic status and that sort of stuff. Like, look, man, like working class people date too, and um, and, and are political, have go good sex lives, and are political. And like, I don't think anyone would like not date you because you're working class. Like, yeah, I mean, some people might, but then there are people you don't sure. want to date anyway. So yeah. who cares? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I feel like we've come across as quite harsh and. We're trying to have empathy and we do have empathy with the situation it's really <laughs> shit when you get into a spiral of no one will ever like me or whatever like for sure but, but we've also met those met those boys you know that do just think that because they can yeah because they can call adorn at you that mm. like every other girl or every other person is like not good enough for them you know yeah that's the thing don't use your politics as a way of making yourself think you're better than these normies and most of these normies are probably really fucking interesting okay say say you know she's a leaver voter I was a Labour voter. You can turn a Labour voter into a radical. You can turn a fucking Lib Dem into a radical. Well, that's leading on to the next question, actually. But, um, <laughs> yeah. If you want to send us some follow-up questions or feedback. Aren't you excited in educating someone? I am. Like, mm. come to think of it, like, the best relationships that I've had, like, didn't involve someone as, as, as rad as me. It's always that sort of, like, they teach me about, like, I don't know, technical things to do with, I don't know, fucking, I don't know, computers or whatnot. And I teach them about, like, class politics of it yeah. it's just like it's great i mean definitely i mean like my first serious relationship i learned a lot very very quickly but i still had stuff to teach them in terms of like feminism and yeah, yeah, yeah. like how to not hit on a girl on your first date and stuff like that like yeah and it's funny and it's fun and it's 
you don't know everything and I'm sure you know that and nor does she and isn't part of the, yeah part of the fun is like what do you know what do I know maybe she isn't super into Adorno what are you picking on Adorno I don't know yeah but she actually knows a shitload about I don't know the life cycle of marine animals sick I want to know about that totally quantum physics or yeah. like car mechanics yeah so yeah give give yourself a break for the like neat stuff and give other people a break on the political stuff and I think you'll do much better we don't have to turn it up, but I'm just, just gonna check it out. Yep, no, we're not turning it off. We got told off for cutting. So this time, if I go to the toilet, you're just gonna have Mary. Oh, sorry, so many yourself. boobies. Which is nice. Yeah, looks, oh, looks banging, man. Cool. Okay. So, moving swiftly on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, God, okay, okay. Oh, you just cable. Hi, I'm a 19-year-old cis straight guy, and I'm autistic. I have no experience with dating or relationships. Nearly all of my close friends are women, I have no problems talking to women, but as soon as I feel there may be a potential for a date or something more, it becomes nearly impossible to keep up a conversation. I've become very aware that uh, I, strug- I still struggle with conversation and I'm scared to bring up my politics, uh, as a large number of women at my uni will be Lib Dems at best. <laughs> I've tried dating apps but have been ghosted to no end and I worry this because I'm not flirting and I come across as uh, as desperate. I've become increasingly worried I'll be alone forever and then scared that implies that I could be an incel. Do you have any advice for organizing a first date and as a first step before I start worrying oh as a first step before I start worrying about sex and relationships and all the rest of it? I mean I like this question a lot. The first thing I would say is we have one about how to date um, when you have Asperger's, which please, please, please watch. Yeah, because well, I know it's, we know it's a different ball game and that sort of stuff. But, you know, there are a few tips there that... In that terms are... of, like, social anxiety, not knowing what to say, that covers a lot of basics. Yeah. Um, other stuff... I mean, I don't know. To me, it's a bit similar in terms of, like... It is similar. Like... So that's why we're putting them together in one video. We'll do oh, that. Yeah, yeah, sorry. We will. Um, bits I would talk about... Um, Nearly all my close friends are women. I have no problems talking to women. That's really great. And that's actually a really good sign that a lot of your friends are women. That means you're probably, like, you're worrying about becoming an incel. And that those two things together show that you're probably a really legit guy. Yeah. Because incels don't worry about becoming incels. Yes, yes. Um, right, in terms of first date ideas, because I think that's was kind of the main, the main question. Um, if, if someone is potentially interested in you. I always find street drinking really fun. Like, and when I say street drinking, I don't just mean, like, on any random stoop and that sort of stuff but you know like parks canals um you know riverfronts some crazy rooftop some you know some yeah some terrace so yeah gardens so yeah i i love that stuff even in the middle of winter even in the middle of rain i don't know mm. something about that to me see what i was thinking which i mean i love that stuff too but like say like you're worried about making conversation some things i've done as like first dates are kind of like nostalgic quirky things which don't involve too much talking so for example open top bus ride, go to an aquarium, totally. go to like a museum and laugh at all the nudes, you know, like things where there's, there's the conversation starter is already in front of you. 100%. So if you're worrying about your issues or like, or running out of things to say, there's like, oh my God, look at that dolphin. Or like, do you think it's problematic we're in an aquarium? <laughs> you yeah, know? No, there's some, you know, some modern art galleries where there's mm. like art pieces as experiences. Mm. So you sort of already have stuff to uh, yeah. get on with. So like there's, and like I would find it very charming if someone said instead of, do you want to come to mine, babe? Said like, hey, do you want to go on an open top bus ride? I'd be like, fuck yeah. That yeah. sounds ridiculous and sick and yeah. fun. Yeah. Or ice skating. Yeah. Yeah. So like bowling. Bowling. Anything where there's a, a thing what you're doing. Totally. That isn't just like, hello. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, to be fair, that's true. As in, it's even street drinking can be a bit more. That. Well, you can but you know, but you look at the people. aquarium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you like you kind of talk about people. Or you mm. talk about I don't know. There were there were a few times birds decided to give front like give birth to eggs in front of us. Really? So that was this whole thing. Yeah, Whoa. swans actually. <laughs> Fuck! How big are the eggs? How big? Yeah, yeah. And it like gave birth to it literally in front of us. Bigger than the baby's us. head. Like, is it hard of a swan than it is for us? No, I think it's smaller, but it's just so, like, out there. Mm. And it also, like, it's it's much harder, right? Mm. So it's like in you. It's just like, oh. Ooh. God, imagine carrying around this It was quite traumatic on the yeah. first day. And then like, <laughs> that could be us one day. <laughs> oh. Or oh, then the other one, like, p- one pigeon assaulted the other pigeon. It's this whole thing. The nature is it's tough. Or urban walks as well. There, There's lots of amazing, you, yeah, I mean, again, we're not sure if you're in the city, but there's so many amazing urban walks that will literally take you from a place to place that, that are of interest mm. as such. 
uh, yeah. those. But wasn't it was it actually first date ideas or was it how to have a first date? And don't judge just the people are just lip dance. Like I do more than the next person. Believe me, if you look at my Twitter profile, like yeah. all I do is I bitch about lip dance and Chakomona more than I bitch about Tories a lot of the time yeah. because there's something about lip dance I find repulsive. And Chakomona is a terrible person. Yes. And yet, though, like as we always, yeah, as, as we say, you can change one's politics. Like if uh, you know, if 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 they're fit and open-minded and have good humor, just because they're Lib Dem, like, yeah. oh, and you can start does. with that conversation, like, oh, why do you identify as a Lib Dem? And then be like, but don't you find it like problematic that X or Y? And, yeah, like, you know, you can actually because a lot of people who identify as centrist identify as centrist because they see the left as like this scary thing with like radical politics and they don't realize that radical politics means being nice to each other yeah yeah, like, yeah. it's just the status quo they are not necessarily yeah. that interested in politics and that's just then that ends up you know whether it comes mm. into and that sort of stuff so yeah but then again look at the one we just did in terms of like political opinions and stuff yeah. because and do not worry you will 100 percent find the right person everyone always finds the right person you're still super young as well like Absolutely. i know 19 might feel like you're behind everyone else oh my god they're 19 yeah. jesus christ i'm sorry look sorry but i'm now reacting like this but babes you'll be fine yeah you'll be so you have fine female friends you'll clearly know how to talk to women i know you said that's not the problem but like that's great because then they'll recommend you to their friends and they'll like you're a dude that is trusted by women which is really fucking cool you're not going to be an incel it's kind no. of like the sorting hat in harry potter like <laughs> Even if like, they put the hat on you and it's like, hmm, you could be an incel, you know, an incel should show you the way to greatness. You can be like Harry and be like, dear hat, I don't want to be an incel. And then you won't be a fucking incel. <laughs> you know, you know, this work. is perfect. Yeah, of course. <laughs> also, I don't know what... Um, the, the, I think there are a lot of women out there that are into like dating younger people. What if you took this time to for, get, for perhaps go on like mm. dating apps? Get potentially. And like literally just like go and really date like all the women that will perhaps like teach you all the tricks and then you can use them on like whoever else because like but maybe that's there's what we're doing right now we Sorry? are the older women teaching him all the tricks yes of course no, but i mean like women. even people in like i don't know people in their 30s people in their 40s fuck it like they've been around the block they know how to use the so like just learn <laughs> just learn the it? tricks and, then <laughs> and you can then um you know maybe you can then uh, apply it to someone in the future mm. just use this time to like i don't know please and learn and and uh, yeah yeah, and watch our videos about how to do sex to k totally subjectively because also yes. that doesn't hurt being good at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you said not, you don't want to worry about that, but yeah, first eight ideas I think we covered. Yeah, no, there's so much. I think you hug. Oh my God. You have so much time for like education. It's great. Yeah, yeah. You sound super nice. Yeah, because we were talking about this recently, right? So it's in like, how come like, like sex in early 20s was so crap? And it's because no 20 something dude knows what the fuck they're mm. doing. And then in your later 20s and hopefully in the 30s as well, it just becomes better. It's not because you're dating like better people. Well, it's just that everyone's aged and now they know what they're doing a bit more. Yeah. So if you can be like 20 years old and like know what to do, like that will... I mean, top tips, give head, have lube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Be yeah, consensual, yeah. obviously. Like, well, yeah, yeah, check yeah. in with the person, make sure yeah. they're doing all right. Watch our um, videos about social cues and, like, how to not be creepy if you're unsure about reading signals. Neck, yeah. nipples, bum, lower back. For me. Sorry? Not for me. Gotcha, gotcha, mm. fine. Well, yeah, you see, so it is subjective. It is subjective, but, you, but know, you can ask for that stuff and you can figure it out. Like, for sure, yeah. Wait, that's good. Okay. And so then, to sum up the last two questions. Yeah. Hey... Do you think it's a good idea to only date leftists? I think we just answer that one. Yeah. yeah. Like, if you want to, that's fine. I pretty much do, but that's because I'm in quite a lazy and intolerant place right now, and it d isn't to say I wouldn't not do that in the future. Uh, I, I, I'm absolutely vehemently saying no, mm -hmm. because mm, the non-lefties end up being more loyal. <laughs> Whereas yeah. the lefties are full of themselves. <laughs> and a lot of lefty dudes don't think, they think they already know it all. They think they know how to do oh, feminism. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah, think yeah, they yeah. know everything. Like if you're, if someone is open to learning, that's much more attractive to me than them being like, oh, I got anarchist, man. Yeah. Also, lefties are, they have no style. Well, to some people, I guess it's attractive. Sure, fine. <laughs> 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 Fucking fine. Yeah. I mean, that'll be fine. They don't use moisturizer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, sorry. I'm not yeah, sure, actually. That's so annoying. Actually, my... I mean, I, I, th I know one lefty who definitely uses very expensive moisturizer that we probably couldn't afford. 
Introduce me. Well, you, no, you, no, you know, know who I mean. Moisturizer. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I'm but almost hundred percent sure I absolutely you use moisturizer. Love him that. I yeah, absolutely no, love exactly. That, yeah, he's doing it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, not to say if you don't use moisturizer, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> moisturizing is a political project. <laughs> <laughs> You'll thank us one day. Mm. No, but I had yeah, lots of people sneer at me as in you know I've been I've been bought by the capitalist class because mm. I use a moisturizer. Maybe. Uh. But I feel so supple. Yeah. Also, it's fine. People still want to fuck me. It's okay. Have oh, great. Thanks. Anyway, so <laughs> okay, that was the batch of three that were kind of the same. Um, this one I don't actually understand because it's not really phrased as a question, but maybe you can. Oh yeah. Okay. Q for agony on. Q for agony on. Looking back on my hookup and relationship history, I can only find two. And then they were, and they were long ago, when I was sober, when first kissing, slash being sexual with them. This is really common among friends I've compared notes on this with, and I don't feel unokay about it for the most part. But if I were to try, if, but if I were to try break this pattern, I'm not sure I'd be able to. Right, couple of thoughts on this. Although this, this is not much of a question. In the future, if we can ask people to like phrase actually, it as a question. Yeah, this is more like a comment. So two things for me are interesting about this. First of all, that you compare notes with friends and fascinating that it wasn't basically I like your friends already that no one goes like yeah like I just I, I like I fucking everyone I have all these relationships I'm like so satisfied and happy and all this stuff and like what are you not because in the in the real world it's like this and it's really dark so yeah, I'm so glad you have was, yeah sympathetic and, yeah. and you're all in the same boat and everyone's like well how is it for you how is it for you that's fucking brilliant and then the next the next thing sorry are you, is, is that is that okay? Yeah, yeah it's good. It's, it's the heat on my face. No, Anyways, we're fighting like the eggs. second one. I wanted to mention it on one of the previous shows, but I never got to. But it's like a story. And look, this is the story is way more like out there than the actual question. But I just want to use it as an illustration as to the the sort of cycles that people kind of end up in. So um, I was listening to again. I was listening to this podcast, and it was talking about how. Um, I think the, po the, the podcast itself was about the porn industry and about the stigma around it as such. But then the producer that was... <sighs> someone that was like, uh, I guess, uh, recording it as such, um, they admitted, I don't remember where it was them now, or their friend or whatever, someone who they knew, um, that they have issues with, they can't necessarily go to the toilet at anyone else's place or at anyone or like in public places in cafes or anything like that. Uh, so only at home. And they also have a housemate and they can't do it when the housemate is at home as well. So they would literally take a 20 minute drive to go to work um, to do it there and then come back home. Or they like they wouldn't drink all day. It's just, it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a certain... It became a phobia. Like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is also way more common than people would mm -hmm. think, actually. Absolutely. So, uh, but basically, they so then got into the cycle of things uh, and became so embarrassed, etc., that they wouldn't date and they would keep the secret. But it, because it, it became such a secret, then they became dirty. And then, like, because they felt dirty, they thought that the only space for them to be is like watch quite intense porn to, in order to sort of kind of punish themselves mm. but not really and then it's just basically now I'm talking through years and years and years and then they're guilty that they're watching this porn but they have this issue and it's just like it became a, a problem that one could have hopefully just talk to a partner like and have it you know there would be trust in that sort of stuff snowballed into them like yeah then she was born uh, only 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 uh, seeing sex workers as well so not dating only seeing sex workers and snowball into this thing but then the oh yeah it wasn't the watching of the porn it was the sex workers and then like into this vortex where they were like um, then embarrassed over that and basically so what I'm saying is that don't allow any of the issues that you may have right now to then snowball to the point where you don't think that you can ever have a relationship or anything like that because um, yeah hopefully that won't be the case well this is, a, this is yeah, yeah so don't get into that pattern as such if you can get in out of yeah. that pattern in whichever way or form that is because okay i want to like ask you because i i find this question quite confusing mm -hmm. so they're saying they've only had two sexual partners it's not a question anyway no, but they only had two sexual partners and they were a long time ago but they're referring to the, the lack of sexual partners as a pattern yes so it's not really a pattern it's just like an acceptance of it's or like a nice spell, pretty much. Yeah, but like accepting that that will be forever, right? But they also say, I'm not sure I'd be able to break it, and they don't feel bad about it. So do you want us to help you 
to start dating again or are you happy with not dating and you want us you want our opinion on it like well i think they're saying that like they've now are learning to be single and like they don't think they'll be able to give that space away i mean look it's fine if you want to be single forever that is a completely fine thing and i'd never like you know as long as you're not like an incel about it um but when we say incel we mean the bad misogynist ones not like people that are actually just struggling to date themselves. yeah no 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 but if you like if you're not developing an unhealthy attitude towards women, shall we say, in a flirtation with the alt right because of that, then I don't see there a problem with being okay with being single. And it seems like you are okay with it. I do find it interesting, like, like on the one hand, yes, it's really nice that they share this with all their friends. Yeah. On the other hand, I do find it interesting as an entire friendship group that has kind of accepted singleness as the status quo. Have you accepted it because you're scared of trying to date again? Because we, yeah, we like I said, we have lots of videos about how to date. Or are you, have you accepted it? Also, because is it just all dudes? I wonder. This is the thing. There's not really enough information about like age, about mm. about really how they feel about it, about who the friends are to us. Like, so maybe we can just say like try and formulate it into a question and send it back. Because yeah. We haven't really got that much to say at this stage nope, because so. it, I can't really tell what your attitude is towards it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So. Okay. I think this was well in the whole video, wasn't it? Put them probably. Yeah. Yeah, I guess yeah, so. Yeah. Okay. Oh uh, wait, it's my turn. How should one deal with rejection? Well, hey, we kind of covered it a little bit in the last episode. Cry for days. But <laughs> well, which is also part of the. No, yeah, I, mean, I was being kind of sincere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I actually really like this as a question because uh, there are so many practical tips, so many feelings about this. Because hey, been rejected. Actually, yeah, been rejected twice quite intensely in the last year, and in general, I have been rejected plenty of time by people that like meant the world to me. And so it happens for everyone, is what I'm trying to say. Even um, your agony arms. <laughs> but, no, but you know, I know yeah, what you mean. Like, I know what you mean. I, I'd be surprised if you meet anyone, every, anyone yeah, no. that hasn't been rejected. If you haven't been rejected, it's because you've been scared to try. Or you somehow were in one of those relationships at the start of when you were 17 and you're still together, which. Yeah. I, I think there are two parts to this, mm -hmm. which we kind of covered in the previous video last episode, but there's being rejected from someone from like a hookup scenario where you're like hey babe in the bar and she's like no and they're being rejected when you've attempted or pursued or has been more of an emotional maybe long-term-ish input in someone and then it happens and yeah. those are two different things and i think you deal with them in two different ways maybe yes well yeah if you get enough rejection on those like nights out like don't become like desensitized to that and just like trying to hit on everyone just to see if someone sticks because that's mm -hmm. not like you being rejected it's just you being a prick instead of reproducing that mm -hmm. behavior and then people will like you less and less anyways yeah if you're like a cock and someone throws a drink on you <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. and then uh with the more uh, with the more emotional stuff i have a few tips yeah should i yeah go for it so number one tip that i've it, it, i learned um i think it, it opened up everything for me actually um you don't really when you get rejected, you feel extremely, uh, you know, embarrassed, humiliated, like they'll hate you, like they're disgusted by you. All of these feelings, like... Like they'll tell all, your, all their friends as yeah, well, yeah, yeah. everyone will know. Yeah, yeah, and it's like such a, that they, you're, yeah, you're such a petty, ham like you're maggot a of a human being, absolutely. Yeah. And then, and that they hate you in some sort of way or form. Yeah. And then what really helped me to think that that's not the case at all, well, obviously, still a subjective, but... um. It's when I was, you know, in a situation, I guess, when I rejected someone. And did I think of them even an ounce less? Not at all. Yeah. Not at it's all. It's so true. Yes. And that's, what, that's when things clicked me. I'm like, I just, you know, re rejected that person. Though they, like, I guess, admitted feelings to me. And do I think any less of them? Do I want to hang out less with them? Do anything like that? Not at all. They mm. were great. They were babes about it. And we hang out all the time. That's the thing. Th those emotions are most, unless the person who rejected you with the cunt like those feelings are mostly coming from you totally. and like i'm not to say you won't have them you will have them but like trying to understand that they're coming from you and not from that person totally is yeah is is huge yeah like, yeah they yeah. really help me to sort yeah, of when i reject some someone i'm like please tell me my friend and often the rejected person is the one who makes distance understandably because they're hurt yeah but yeah like i said unless they're an asshole like they will probably just honestly feel sad about the situation feel sad that they, they hurt you yeah like that's the thing that happens when I reject someone. I just feel really sad that this person I care about, I've hurt their feelings. Yeah, yeah, but in no way does that, like, we'll, we'll, I don't think they've ever think less no. of you or anything. Well, like and, and like I said in previous videos, like, I don't hit on people because I'm terrified of rejection, right? And so if someone has had the bravery to tell me they like me, and then I, like, 
yeah, and I reject them. I feel like so impressed by them that they had this like confidence to say this to me and that they were prepared to put their heart on a line in a way that I don't. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I'm like ultimate respect for you and I'm so, so sorry I can't like be with you in the way you want. Like, yeah. If anything, like it's the, the, the people that are doing the rejecting that need to learn a lot more because there are some yeah. people that like do it really well and like still make you feel you know, like the awesome person that you that are. Good question. And then I hope yeah, you get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there are some that are absolute dickheads about it, and then those are the ones that will destroy you, and that's really, yeah. really tough. Um, yeah. In terms of even more um, practical things, I wouldn't personally. That's what worked for me. I don't know. I wouldn't advise. I would not personally advise the whole like block them off of social media and all of that stuff and never see them again. Because to me personally, what it helps is like the the mis the, the demystification of them so that they're not just like something out there that I will forever think that they're perfect but you know bit by bit you kind of become see like you do start seeing them as mortal rather than it's just like this whole idea that you had in your head so I know most people go like oh block everything and every like all the time you know but I don't know like I'm more I'm, I'd, I'd rather see bit by bit the the imperfections actually really get rid of those feelings of like fancying someone rather than you know, kind of continue fancying them for the rest mm. of my life, really. It's interesting because I only recently blocked a thing that is kind of associated with someone that kind of rejected me, but all the different situation. But um, before that, someone who we're both very close with. Whoop, sorry. Um, I found out this thing about this person who had kind of rejected me and I was very, I was very heartbroken whether or not they actually rejected me as semantics, but I was very heartbroken about. Um, and I saw this thing of them and it made me panic and all this stuff and then someone yeah who's very close with us gave me this really wonderful bit of advice I think about all the time and he said yeah it's gonna hurt when you see them it's gonna hurt every time you see them for the foreseeable but like see them on social media I mean but every single time you see them on social media it's gonna hurt five percent less totally it's gonna it's still gonna be that you're still gonna get that stab in the gut but it is it is going to lessen 100%. And whereas the problem is when you do something like what I did recently and block them entirely is when someone mentioned in passing this thing that they'd done, it was like, mm. because I hadn't desensitized myself to them. Yep. And so although it was like, it was used as a safeguarding mechanism, actually it ended up meaning that it was more of a shock when I did see them because I pretended they didn't exist. Yeah. So, you know, I've done both, but yeah, that bit of advice, like it will hurt, but it will hurt 10% less is true because that 10% less is also time and I know like time is the greatest healer is boring advice but it fucking is yeah 100% and then on to that sort of final bit of the um tips of the tips I have two um both of them I've utilized and I think to great extent uh, sorry to great success uh, so one of them is I, I think we mentioned this again in the past I write down 21 reasons as to why I don't necessarily like that person so like you know like just the little things like I don't know something annoying that they do with their hair or something annoying like I don't know something annoying about that particular friend of theirs or something really annoying that they did in that particular situation but you really have to remember all the annoying things because like what our brain I don't know tricks us into doing is only remembering the nice mm. things and uh, I think it is not that bad to juggle your memory and sort of remember those little things that kind of annoyed you uh, so I write down 20 21 reasons and uh, 20, 21. That, yeah, it's just like it's not exhausting but it's just enough yeah okay. and then by the end you kind of have to already really really think but then by that point you're already kind of like I, I it, it's enough and that right. actually works for me, it does. Do you refer back to it at different, uh, like yes. wobble times? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you remember those. Because yeah, again, you just you always forget, and because you always, I don't know, you think of that relationship in such perfect, you know, you know the, the sort of modes yeah, of like idealize it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so it's good to remember those those darker bits, mm. or how they treated your friend, or something like that. Or how they treated you? Well, yeah, even that, of course. But uh, like the more, the more sort of like kind of the less prosaic and the more practical that stuff is the better you know mm. like so the more like matter of fact like really really kind of straight to the point then that's the better and then the last one <laughs> oh god i think i've only told you and one more person about this that, that I do. is this a thing yeah yeah, yeah i, I love this oh god okay so uh, yeah again so th as we all know the first couple of days are the trickiest are the worst uh after a rejection as such um and what i do is i paint either with red and black because I, uh, I like it like that i paint a strip sort of from here for here so it kind of looks aesthetically quite beautiful uh with like a marker pen up to here or so so sort of a big strip that i would always see but it looks kind of pretty no one will ever know what that is and you know it's not tattooed or anything but um it's just there and it's 
and it's just a reminder, you know, it's a reminder to not, I mean, but it's a reminder to like, not message that person. You real, really, when you're doing the painting, you have to really think or like, or you really have to kind of really remember like that this is now fucking over. Like that's it. I'm not going back to that. So every time you have a wobble and you're like, I'm gonna tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then every time, because you wash your hands, right? Then it goes off. You have to keep on doing it. Keep on like, keep on putting it on. Keep on putting it on. I mean, yeah. Usually it lasts like five to six days or something like that. Obviously after like lots of repainting it and all that stuff but by the end of like the first week or so it's like you can already see clear mm. it's you like quitting smoking the first five days are the fucking worst yeah and it's the sort I of thing smoking again after five days <laughs> <laughs> it's the sort of thing no one can really tell what it is but it's with you it's very physical it kind of looks pretty for me anyways yeah. um and it's a visual reminder it's a visual reminder you know so i mean they can really take in any shape you know mm. yours could be completely different or whatever it is but no but i like this because it's interesting because our advice then falls into two different sections like why they're shit and also what like mechanisms you can use which is nice yeah. like yeah because like yeah even if you've been rejected you can say oh they're an asshole but you also you still you still want to like, yeah and like basically like yeah you, you whenever you're putting this on you you know that you should never text them because like it would be a bad idea for this and this and this read this and, and then you know it's friday night and you had a few and like oh i'm just gonna text them and then it's just that reminder that like remember how you were when you put that yeah. but that on remember why you did why it. you did it uh, and and yeah that really goes like yeah fuck i really i'm just drunk i'm not being clever and then in the morning you'll regret it anyways right and so yeah have you ever had a time where you did the line oh, and 100%. broke it yeah yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no but to be fair we'll go back together so that's fine okay well yeah, then that's yeah. yeah yeah that was a good reason yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so i guess i guess that's that no, no, I love jesus that. i'm fucking warping this time. Oh, I don't know. we were in bikini last time yeah you can't get more boobie than that true, true. it's really hot in here yeah it is so take off all your clothes i am gay I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. I love a good karaoke. I think I'm going to do karaoke for my birthday. Amazing. Because it's like, it's November. So it's like, there's not... November. <laughs> oh, there's some birthday presents. But, um, but yeah, there's not much to do like outside. So I thought we could go to karaoke. Absolutely. Really yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Sorry. Let's go. Um, right, so do I feel like we're going super fast. Anything? I'm actually good. fine with the bowels right now. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm, I normally need to pee like a fucking stallion. But today, not. Oh, okay, this one is, but we're gonna... Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> oh, yeah. yeah. We'll just... Okay. Hi, I hope I'm not asking a repeat question. You are? You are. I am male 28. I'm trying to get better at talking to people that I'm attracted to, but I keep getting stuck in the mindset that I learned from older men in my life. Oh, pursue, pursue, pursue. I find this advice terrible in the modern world, but I have never had a chance to learn a better way. I now find myself struck with anxiety whenever I want to talk to someone that I'm interested in. What advice do you think you might be able to offer? We have covered um, exactly like how to flirt without being a creep, but specifically that title, but also we have covered this in many, many, many yeah. videos. So I'm so sorry, we're just having to become a bit pickier just because like what we released last video was something like 10 or days ago, or two weeks ago, and we already got 13 questions, which is like, we're super lucky. It's and wonderful, like, yeah. It's wonderful, but it's just like, we don't have, we both work full time. We just don't have to film the time to film these. This so often, please so we have do to check out here. our previous videos. Our titles are quite self-explanatory, and also Marianne, bless her soul, bothered to put them into separate playlists based on different themes. So there is a playlist about how to date, basically. Yeah. That please just check just out. Just through that um, the, if you can. Yeah. The only thing I would say is the thing about like what they pursue, pursue, pursue. Yeah. Just so just through on binging part, you can also because we might be a bit. I don't know, annoying, whatever. Just put it us on like 1.5 speed, like because we do bang on. That's how I listen to most of our stuff. It's like 1.75 speed. Man, you, I, I think you're crazy because I think we talk fucking fast and they have to like <laughs> slow it down to like 0.75. But as you wish. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. Now the on the yeah. Um, just that like you already said that's bad advice. Don't do that. Oh yeah, watch our other videos. I don't know. Yeah. You're yeah. Right. I don't like. Don't follow that advice. It's obviously bollocks and non-consensual and gross. Yeah, but also don't fall into the thing where you have anxiety talking to someone that you're interested in. Like, everyone has, has suffers from the same thing. Do you think we, we all suffer from anxieties whenever we're talking about that someone we're interested yeah. in? Like, we Jesus, all do so or say something stupid. Absolutely. Like, all the time. So this is like universal, literally. So like, sorry, babes, not that special. No, 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 but you know what I mean. You like, all have anxiety. What advice do you think you might be able to offer? Like, you're going to be okay. Check our other videos. 
if you have questions after watching the other ones on our how to date stuff then please send in more specific questions i quite like the idea of pursue just because it makes you assertive but obviously you have to read other people's signals if anyone is even flirting with you all of that stuff that's the thing yeah because you can pursue you can like okay this is our politics of seduction thing right seduction in and of itself is not non-consensual seduction when the person has clearly shown a lack of interest is non-consensual you have to earn yeah their interest and you you can do that and by okay if by pursue you mean like <laughs> no if by pursue you mean i like this girl i'm gonna go out of my way to talk to her at a party fine unless you you know compliment her in nice ways yeah i'm gonna be like hey it's great i haven't seen you in a while how's it going there are ways of pursuing someone you're interested in that aren't shit yeah don't do nagging it's funny the only thing don't that's harass her. yeah but it's funny that it's like the older men is what who's mm, recommending well. this as in there's clear like generational divide um but uh, there is a lot there are a lot of fucked up politics in relationships of like the older generation mm -hmm. so yeah certainly don't don't uh, don't emulate that, that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. all right mm -mm. smoothing whiftly on okay i'm gonna get another thing here. oh please <sighs> okay I will say the skirt is only for walking. Oh, this question. I, I like all the questions. But yeah, I like yeah, this yeah. One no, lot. there's some basically that are just like less repeaty. Oh, also more like this one like pertains very much to me. Oh, I mean, it pertains to both of us, but I feel very like I'm with you. So, <laughs> Let's go. Or the ones about rejection, I don't really. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> me too, I feel like I yeah, I've never been rejected. <laughs> That's because I never hit on people That's though. True. And I recognize that as my flaw. Have I been rejected? I mean, yeah, the, the, the big thing that isn't quite a rejection, but is also a rejection. Right. The, like traumatic incident in my life right it was never a rejection because i never went there which is the problem yeah. which is why i had two years of torment right yeah so also don't not pursue someone because that will be terrible too uh. okay and this is why we're not experts we're just two gals trying yeah. to get through this yeah, sorry weird... when i say we're sex therapists that's very very tongue-in-cheek i recognize yes. that we're not qualified to do this no, no, and no. we would never pretend God, we are i mean look at us yeah. <laughs> I would, they should be fair. I'm so much hand. more comfortable in like a therapist's office to say like we're having a fag. You know, like in olden days when you're allowed to smoke in Totes. offices. Like I don't think I could go to a therapist if I couldn't smoke. Well, I think the ones like expensive ones, private ones, you probably can do whatever the yeah. fuck you want. Like, just like piss on the floor. Literally. Yeah, I imagine someone like Johnny Depp just doing that. Probably. Yeah. Did you ever watch um, Cruel Intentions? No. Where it's about like oh my god, so loads of really rich people that screw over this rich girl and they were taking coke all the time. It's really good. It's right. really like rich people doing terrible stuff. But the boy has like a really expensive therapist and it's like I would just really get angry though. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's terrible, but it's also kind of sexy in a terrible way. Oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> hey guys, this may be a bit of a niche question, but I'd appreciate some advice since it sounds like both of you had at least some experience with this. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Basically, over a year ago, I left my country because the political environment there had become too toxic towards my views and I needed out. I'm very happy with where I've ended up. However, the language most people speak here is not my native language. Although I've become fluent in the language to the point where I'm confident using it professionally and for political engagement. That's fucking amazing. Yeah. Um, I cannot seem to get over that language slash cultural barrier or language and cultural barrier when it comes to dating. It's bad enough that I often lack the words to express what I feel for a person. But in addition to that, I feel like a lot of the social cues I learned growing up are just non-existent or maybe even irrelevant here, and I'm simply missing things. I wouldn't have thought this would be a bigger problem moving between Western countries, yet here I am. Sometimes a person I fancy may pick up on this and switch languages with me, but a lot of it just turns into a cliche at that point, and I don't want to be the guy that just knows how to talk dirty in a foreign language. You mentioned in passing in your Dirty Talk video that Austrians don't actually speak German in bed, which I guess solves part of my problem, but flirting with them is still a mystery to me. So is he, I'm guessing he's in Germany. I don't know. Does it, does it matter? Does it matter? No, 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 no. But I just want to I want to clarify on the on the dirty point in bed thing. That was um, personal feedback I got from like two or three Germans. Not like this is not like the rule in German and Austria, Germany and Austria. So like, I just heard that saying like, "Fuck me, yeah," is not quite a sexy <laughs> thing. Like, "Fuck me." <laughs> That's just personal feedback. Not um, not like the truth about Germans and Austrians. Rony, uh, Rony, Rony, Rony. <laughs> Rowan, oh, I tiny. It. I was gonna say Rowan, tiny. As in tiny little technical thing. If uh. you hold this, I'm gonna move your mic just because there's the earring. I worry oh, that it's it constantly. Possibly, possibly. Yeah, so I'm gonna literally just put it like. Oh, sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Surely, yeah. Okay. 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 That should be better. Yeah. But that's does that, does better. it ruin the aesthetic of my Mary Poppins sex slave look? Well. It's like a brooch, brooch, 
Brooch. 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 Like Brooch. Brooch. <laughs> Thanks, okay. Oh, that's, that's yours. Yeah, oh. yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, did I oh, look at no, 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 it's fine. No, no, no. So, <laughs> oh my god. Hello. Um, <laughs> but I feel like I'm being much more like pretend sexy than I normally am because of the outfit. I feel like very much like. Oh god, I, I don't, I can't, I can't. But I mean, just... you're actually sexy. I think I'm just, no, no, I think I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> I mean, it's because I'm so like prim. I feel like I need to overcompensate by like being salacious with the camera. Yeah, whereas I think my, my outfit is too revealing, so I'm more like. At the end of it, I think I'm gonna, after the second thingy, I'm just gonna put on raincoats because like, that's more me. I don't know, man. This is not me. No, no, but it's like, it's, ugh. No, I mean, well, it makes you feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah, for of sure. Course, of course, of course. What about the other blazer? Yeah, it's a bit of a bag, that one. But it's a velvet bag. And maybe, if velvet. I take off, maybe I take off the skirt. Maybe just take off the bra. <laughs> take off the bra and put on the jumper. What jumper? Not the jumper, the, 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 the big, the big blazer. Yeah, I mean, oh would it? So sorry for doing this. We your are question. going to come well, like, right honestly, back. Honestly, like it's it's how the show goes. Yeah. Like is what it is. Like I mean, like you can you can change the channel. <laughs> like as you say, you want to recreate his living room is aesthetic, and if you're in the living room with us, we'd be having exactly this conversation. Literally, <laughs> honestly, or if if we're in pubs, yeah, talking to the people, we also go like, yeah. You know, sometimes it's like we need to talk about ourselves as well. It's not all about you. No, I'm kidding, sorry. Um, right, let's get back to the question. <laughs> it is actually secretly all about us. It's but... totally all about us. <laughs> oh, an excuse to tell one of my stories, great. Okay. But sadly, we can't even like talk about our most interesting stories because it'd be too revealing. Okay, you clearly have more interesting stories than me because I feel like I covered it all. Yeah. Actually, I haven't covered some stuff. Um. <laughs> 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 okay, so one thing I will say is that like, I managed to date in two countries where I did not speak the language at all. And that's because I'm a terrible colonialist Brit who doesn't speak other languages. No, I tried, I tried, I tried. Ich habe ein bisschen Deutsch. <laughs> Shut up. Yo estoy embarazada. I'm pregnant in no Spanish. Lo <laughs> that just means I don't know in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, and I found people who spoke English perfectly, luckily, because you know, what can I say? It's a global second language. Like, that's because of our terrible colonialist history, but it is what it is. Um, but you already said you could speak, like, fluently enough in, like, conversation and shit. So I feel like that is not the problem. And yet you make it sound like, like, to me, it sounds like you're saying it's a language and culture barrier. To me, it sounds like it's more like a actual just cultural barrier if the language is not a problem. Yeah. I get the flirting is more still another language. And you said sometimes, like, out of sympathy, they'll switch to speaking English. If they're comfortable speaking English and they're good at it, there's no harm in just like, I was with this girl for five months and bless her fucking soul, she spoke English with me 24 <laughs> hours a day because I was not very good at Spanish. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, you know, like, and I will say as well, sorry, I'm just going off on this Please, no. tangent. Um, I only spoke in English on Tinder and I said in my Tinder profile while I was in Spain, like, I Did you have a little British flag on your bio? No, I didn't have a flag. <laughs> because I think you know, like yeah, English flag. Oh, you should have like Cornish flag. I just wrote my bio in English, so no, it was kind of obvious. Was, no, though. but like my bio was in English, and my opening questions were always in English. So it was like, mm -hmm. "Hi, I'm in English." And sometimes people were like, "Sorry, I don't speak that good English." And I'd be like, "Okay, that's that will be a problem. We're not compatible because of the language barrier. Fucking fine." Sure. I don't know something for me. It's like I've never done this, but something. To me, this is like hot when like mm. you just hook up with someone that you literally can't like speak. Well, with. I mean, I will say that like one of my best friends who dates a lot more than me often dates people whose English is not very good and has a way lot of time. So, yeah, there are ways of like speaking the language of love and being consensual. Yeah. OK, so I've made a few right. notes on this because um, although I don't know, like you were generous enough to pick up on the fact that I'm not the, you know, from this country as such. And uh, it, how it, did you know? No, no, no. Well, yeah, <laughs> I mean, and, and so that I definitely have had the experience mm. of like the culture shock and the language shock barrier and everything. So yeah, um, English is my third language and I've only began to learn it properly when I was 17 and moved here. Um, and more than the language barrier, what I had is a cultural shock because yeah. so two things was became was was a huge deal so first of all the drug culture here like i just didn't have drugs around where i grew up like at all whatsoever and you did when you were 17. sorry no but like whenever i guess i started dating here more like 19 20 okay. not 17 but uh, i started seeing drugs around me and that was huge for me like i couldn't i could not believe like it. hard drugs or just weed 
no, like MDMA, all of the cocaine, okay. all of that mm. stuff, you know. So I don't know whether that's how it drugs or not. And that would just turn people into a, a, like very, very different beings. And that was like, I didn't get it at all. And so what hap- would happen as well is that I would kiss people. And to me, that'd be like the biggest deal. And I thought they're into me. And then turns out everyone's like, no, it's just like, hi, what are you talking about? Mm. And I'll, I'll be like, oh my God, yeah, like I fancied you for curve. months. And oh my God, and we kissed. And to me, like, oh, fuck, they fancy me too, you know? And I'm like 19 or 20 or something. And like, they're like, what are you talking about? I was just, hi. Like, although like we spent all night together and all yeah. that stuff. That's shit. Yeah, that really yeah. sucked. So, so that was big cultural shock. And I had to become way more cynical, basically, which is really, really sad. Because yeah, like where I come from, like kissing matters. Um, no one just kisses everyone all the time. Like it just it doesn't happen. Um, oh, oh yeah, and so so that was a big thing. And then uh, another thing is I just realized that a lot of the time people like kind of I don't know people kind of not that they fetishize me because there's not much to fetishize over, but like basically like I would be someone people would date but would not necessarily like you know someone would wouldn't date, be date serious. But, but like you're not one that they're like marry or like bring to their parents or something right because i'm like lit- like she's Lithuanian because you're not. foreign really i think so yeah i mean i th- also if i was like from more glamorous if i was like canadian or like swiss mm. or fucking i don't know man like swedish swedish yeah, yeah of course yeah, yeah yeah but it's something about like eastern europe eastern europe backwards eastern europe yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. like it's just the thing and so i had to also learn to become my own person that and that i'm not defined by my like Eastern European background, though I'm proud of it as such, but like it's still a thing to this day. I've been here 11 years. To this day, I have insecurities over being Eastern European rather than anything else. Another whole thing is like, and now I'm just talking about my life, but fuck it, it's just like, I'm not like a diversity hire necessarily, right? Because I'm like, why don't all this stuff? But like, I don't know, like. Yeah, you get the stigma, but not the gains. I get the stigma, but not the gains. Like, it's just, yeah, it's like a really long surname. And like, Eastern Europeans are fucking frowned upon in here. And yet, like, you know, I don't know people from here that are born here never had the trauma of moving that are middle class yeah. as fuck but you know obviously like i i i, 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 I sort of picked up as, as 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 migrants in some other way like then they they're the that was i mean yeah message. i just i just want to say that like when i said not the gains i was not in any way oh, underplaying God, no, like no, what it is for like pocs and like people from like non-european backgrounds <laughs> obviously that's fucking hard harder than my arms maybe like no there was, was a whole different, different like conversation a, yeah i just want to like, like I, mean, I don't get shot by there. the police yeah obviously obviously that is like we totally totally super super fucking get this i'm just saying there's this particular sneer towards where yeah. i come from that is like a different experience that's all absolutely yeah. jesus fucking christ i just wanted to put that in, i thought i felt like i maybe sounded flippant but like sure no 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 of course no but i uh, but, even especially, especially I think in the in the in the milieu that in the industry that I work in, that that's like a, a bit of a conversation to be like that is being had these days. That's mm. all. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's that. Um, so yeah, there's someone they date, and I, I, I think that's not just Eastern Europeans, but that's also people of color. I think maybe per sometimes I have a, like definitely heard that they are being dated or like they're being fetishized. Oh yeah, like they're never, exotic. 100 percent, 100 percent. But like they're not ones that people would then like introduce to their parents yes. or marry. 100 yes, percent, definitely. 100%. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is I think a shared experience. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, communicating in 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 visuals. So I don't know pictures and memes or that, and also music. One thing that I like, well, I've only done it like twice, I think. But um, oh, there's like a tip thing now. Yeah, now a bit of a tip. Um, in, if you like someone, do like a, a, a exchange a playlist of your 10 definitive songs of your life, you know? So it can be very different genres, very different, um, you know, periods, very different, uh, everything, you know? Can, but like literally 10 mm. songs that would completely define you who you I are. I used to do person. like Desert Island Discs with people just on the conversation. Started. Okay, it's a, um, it's a British radio show where it's like, if you're stuck on a desert island, what oh, yeah. 10 songs did you have? And it, oh, they end up like, telling their life stories, like one for all the kid, one else. But it's really nice. And it's yeah. like, it's a really nice game to play. Yeah, and that's multilingual, I feel yeah. like. Yeah, and it's like, uh, all of, I think you'll be surprised just how much of like the same music you probably share as well. Well, and also like when I didn't think that I was going to be staying with my, because I, I met my Spanish girlfriend um, 10 days before I left Madrid, because that's fucking luck. But I didn't think I was going to see her beyond those 10 days. We ended up dating for several months, which is lovely. But um, I, when I when I left, I sent her like five songs that reminded me of her. And it was really nice. And, you know, yeah, music is a really good way yeah. of communicating emotions that you don't need to speak. Yeah. 
And about the talking dirty thing, it's like not everyone enjoys it. I mm. know, like I'm like maybe because I'm not that good at it, but like I like don't care for it that much. So like, although you may have insecurities over it, but like don't, not necessarily. Does but also like yeah, like if the it. like if the language barrier is an issue, then you will be able to find, it, especially if it sounds like you're in a German speaking country. Like German speakers are fucking mostly amazing at English, which is quite shameful making. But I've met very few Germans and Austrians who weren't good at English and you will be able to find someone because like I'm not saying like oh only date someone who can speak English but it makes it a lot easier it makes consent a lot easier it makes sexiness a lot easier if you find someone who can speak English as well and but I think what was fascinating there is that like it is yeah more of that culture shock has and like stuff that a little tips that would work in my country like doesn't work here or mm. stuff like that. that that that's fascinating to me and as well like you say even within like western countries like that that's so interesting. but then I would I would recommend like br rather than like rushing into dating or whatever, make make a friendship group first and see how they interact, see how they are with their loved ones, see how, you know, like, you can learn a lot from the friends you make in another culture before you jump into dating. Yeah. Like, also, what the norms are, what the norms yeah. aren't. Because like, I, I wish I could remember, but there were definitely some things when I was with my German housemates that they were like, no, you don't do that. And I was like, what, why not? Like, oh, yeah. So I'm, oh, God, so many things here as well. Yeah. And I forget. Well, even here, I don't know, yeah, people, people work, people work with... Brushing your hair in front of someone else was apparently considered really rude by the Germans I knew. Uh, 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 brushing teeth outside of the... Outside the bathroom? Outside the bathroom apparently is a bit rude here, no? Oh, I mean, I, I brush my teeth in the toilet, but I'm told that's a bit gross. I sit down on the bathroom floor. I just have, I a, just have a wee. I was like, <laughs> you know, I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I wonder if there is a possibility, I don't know, maybe that's a bit weird and also it doesn't have to mean that you have the same experience, but if there's a way to meet someone from your country that has lived there for a long time, perhaps they would give you some tips as well. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Because, yeah, there might And be also, like, they might also advise you on, like, the type of spaces where you can go, where you can meet someone who's, like, more like you or whatever, like, I don't know if you're political, but, like, political spaces, cultural spaces, like, groups and stuff, like... Yeah, but people definitely, like, tend to sort of cluster around their types as such. Yeah, so you like, also figure out what your type is. Like well, the type I mean, of friends, I mean. Yeah, but even, even like, I don't know, from, if they're from the, so you know, the, the, they're the, the North London squatters, right? They're always right, South London, sure. or like, or like, I don't know, yeah, the, 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 the or like forest school kids, oh, right? Like on. they're always just like everyone in their own clusters and I stuff. I just want to say, one of our comments on Reddit was this was very North London, and I'd just like to point out that this is East London. So go away. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know nothing about us. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like, I know what you mean when you say that. Yeah, 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 I mean, mean like, the mean. forest school kids. And let me just tell you, I had to go through quite a few nervous breakdowns to tell you <laughs> that I'm nothing like that, <laughs> for better or for worse. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, sorry, that was an aside, but... Also, to be fair, forest school is, does a lot of really, really important work. I hadn't even uh, heard of on, it like, until I met on, these people. On, 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 um, on a really, really important community level, internationally, uh... I'm saying it flippantly just because of, of a few people I had to deal with, but that's very, very subjective. And I think they just like, they made that being their, um, they were the ones that made that their identity rather than me slapping it mm. on them as such. So um, I don't, I don't mean it disparagingly. Disparagingly? Disparagingly. 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 And I just want to, before we end this video, and they probably hate our content anyway. I just really want to pick up on the bit of, um, I left my country because the political environment there had become too toxic towards me. I've done that twice. <laughs> there and back again, a leaving tale by Rowan Milligan. Like, yeah, you know, oh, I said my last name. Am I allowed to say my last name? I don't know, yeah, whatever. Everyone knows mine. Yeah, it's, I think it's on my Twitter, whatever. Um, you know, yeah, like, I just really want to sympathize with that because it's a huge thing. And I think the way you wrote it makes it sound like yours was more repressive, whereas mine was more me just freaking out about, like, I don't know mean people or something but like it's a big deal to leave your country and it's really cool that you're happy where you ended up like I said I did that twice the first time I did it I was happy where I ended up for a year and a half and then turned out that was a terrible idea and now I'm back where I started but in a totally different milieu so yeah I just want to say like <sighs> I gotcha, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Yeah. Cool. All right. So one cut. I think you can permit us oh, that, no, right? You can just talk to them. No, while I pee. Or do you want to also? I just want to check if it's going well. Okay. So we're gonna have one cut because one cut I'm is sorry. Fine, right? Like, get me a fucking. I just want. I, I just because you. Yeah. You don't want I just cuts. want to check that it's all doing okay. well. Okay. So well. we need a system. Not paying you, but. Yeah. But love you and leave you. I'll be back in a minute. I'm a very quick right. peer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're back after a short break. 
for me to go to the toilet. And for me to check the hardware, everything's looking good. All looking I good, look you're looking good. absolutely too much, but fuck it, you know? I was gonna put a raincoat on just because it is absolutely ridiculous. But then I was like, I never dress up. Honestly, even when I go out, I never look like this. So this yeah. is literally a one-off. This is, I never look like this. This is all important <laughs> with our scene, because we're in a scene that is quite uh, femme-phobic, shall we say? Well, actually, I think this might come up on one of the, I wanna feel, ugh. It might go over all the questions, or I already forgot about it and didn't say anything about it at some point. But yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's you know we we, we in, I enjoy dressing up. I used to win costume party competitions, so I'm very enjoying being slutty um, Mary Poppins right now. Yeah, it's same. Like I've never been really encouraged to or felt comfortable wearing yeah. anything like this, you know. So so this is my this is a show for me. I'm in yeah. showbiz now, so I'm just We're enjoying this. We're in show this. business, baby. Yeah, yeah. I'm 28, and for the first time, I'm wearing a sexy outfit. So go away, like that's it. Scene. Date and I are back at my apartment. We're both a bit nervous, but we both expressed interest in each other. One of us makes a move, but the other says we should take things slowly. Does slowly in the context mean no more sexual contact for the rest of the night? Or does it mean to round the bases in an hour instead of five minutes? Oh, I know. This don't round the bases in five minutes, no matter what. Honestly, <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's either like a baity question for us to, to like say okay to that sort of behavior or like you really have to sort yourself out. I don't know, man. Like, um, surely like number one, just want to be like, ask? There's literally nothing wrong with asking. Someone says take it slowly. Yeah, that means take things slowly and the kind of like to me think, take things slowly. Honestly, that's a nice way of saying like kind of not for a while. Do you mean for a while that day or do you mean for a while ever? Depends on the situation. That's what yeah. you have to, you know, feel or be able to tell. Like or what ask, you can ask, do ask. is say like, sure, when you're ready, let me know. Or if you get ready, let me know. And then they might not. And like if they say, hey, can we just play a video game instead? That's the signal. Yeah. If they're I mean, still lying in your bed with their bra on, that's a different kind of thing. I don't know. Like, call me conservative or whatever, but I only, unless it's like a fetish of what we talked about all together in previous episodes and we call about, talk about why it's problematic or not in different episodes as well. Mm. But unless it's a fetish, I really enjoy when someone is just like enthusiastic about consent and is really enthusiastic about wanting to go somewhere and really wants me and desires me and it's just like there to do it if someone's like you know kind of like uh, okay so i will me. So, yeah that's the thing i will talk about that from the other perspective because like yes like okay i have a slight beef that is not a beef because i understand the importance of consent but a beefish uh a slice of ham with the Tofu beef. Tofu beef with the no is a no and an unenthusiastic yes is a no and the only way to be consensual with an enthusiastic yes. In most of the time when I'm sleeping with someone for the first time, I am not enthusiastic because I'm scared. And that doesn't mean I don't want to sleep with them. It means that I, I'm not going to be like, yeah, strip me, bitch, when I've just met this person and I'm like feeling a bit insecure about it. So I might well... Actually, probably I'm less likely to say, let's take it slow, which is a problem, actually. But like, I could be well into you and yet not showing it with my enthusiasm. And that's why asking the questions is so important. And being like, also reading the body language. If they're like, D do you want to do this? And they're like, uh, I don't know. That's a no. Yeah. If they're like, do you want to do this? And they're like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just a little, yeah. Then that's a, you know, tone it down like fuck and see if they react differently. Like. Also, yeah. thinking slowly is like, well, if if you are out to the point where okay, it's okay to touch again, well, well, then just this already can be slow yeah. doing this. Well, it's like can already be arousing and like be, uh, you know, that's a one way to take it slowly. Then yeah. there is, you know, there's the neck, there are the ears, you know, there's so many, so many ways you can slowly really build yeah. arousal and that sort of stuff. But that is really only if you think they're okay with it. We get all stress that you know. If, you know what, and like, okay, say you're just have the hookup, then they're not into it and leave. Say you're not and you're actually interested in this person long time, I would like to think you have the patience to wait until a second day. Mm -hmm. Like, like, oh, yeah, the basic that. rule is if they say take it slow, then just be like, yeah, chill, cool. And, and they can be sexy yeah. as well. And then see how they feel. See if they say I've really enjoyed hanging out with you in a non-sexual way and I want to see you again. Or see if they're like, that was really good, maybe see you sometime. Because, oh. yeah. Yeah. There's no harm in taking it too slow. Yeah. There are other things though as well, like, I mean, 
so I don't know you you you, you, you know you you hooked up with someone and that sort of stuff and that's great and what if they're like pushing you to do some more like kinky stuff right and for me personally that's like that it requires trust mm. and it doesn't mean that I'm never gonna do it it's more like you know why don't we do the the the, the you know the the without the kink like too much of a kinky stuff first and then I already have enough trust that like if I ask you to stop you're gonna fucking stop because that's the thing right yeah. like a lot of the time and this is really bad but like I you have to prove me that you're not gonna assault me unless mm. proven other, like what's the yeah. word or like un- yeah, that's my basic when I just meet someone it's like they're probably gonna sexually assault me and then you have to like really fucking work for me to and probably through a couple of dates for mm-hmm. me to think that that's not gonna be the case or they're gonna insult me or stuff like that you know yeah or I'm just gonna leave feeling used and shitty yes like another thing like yeah if you're interested in a person yeah take it slower than you think is maybe acceptable and they will also show you if they if they have the confidence and they want to go somewhere they will give you a sign or they will say like yeah yeah when in doubt fucking hold your fucking horses yeah, i mean it's good that you're asking i suppose mm. and obviously there are certain situations as well and then we, yeah we talked about this in the past where like i mean yeah someone uh, you know you you kind of you slow things down things down on purpose to speed them up again in the future yeah. as such but that's you wouldn't be asking us that question if you already knew that that's happening yeah. Like, make them feel safe with you. If they've said slow it down, be like, yeah, sure. Like, would you like a cup of tea? Do you want to play a video game? Yeah. Do you want to, whatever, something else. That like, you're spending time together. Because if this, if this is only, like, a first date or a second date, this per- yeah, this person doesn't know you. They yeah. don't know anything about you. They don't know if you're a nice person. They don't know if you're just someone who wants to, like, get laid and leave. Like Also, talking about, like, what each other is into is fucking hot. Like, it doesn't have to be this way. But, like, I don't know, like, a bit of foreplay sometimes. Not every situation is like that. But you can just really discuss like what 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 turns you on, what are you interested, in, and that can be really really fucking sexy. So I mean, yeah, yeah there. Are, I don't know. It just sounds like the way that that for- was formulated was a little bit like, okay, like you probably did something maybe a bit dodgy. That's now you're thing. asking us to tell you that it was okay because it says like one of us makes a move, the other says we shake a thing. What was that? Making a move being like this, or making a move being like whip the dick out, or yeah, like or yeah, whip that the dick out. exactly because like. Never start with whipping the dick out. Never start with touching their crotch. Generally, stay gen- genital free for the yeah, first yeah, yeah. while of yeah. dating. Like, yeah, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not rocket science. Like, no. I don't know. Like, we've we've done this again, in how to not the, be a creep and how to take things as they come. In this in this sexual economy, oh, I can't believe I just said yeah, that. Yeah, love gross. it. Mm, mm. <laughs> that, was, that was great. Like, really, that quick return is where mm. it's at. So, like, people are just trying to get through as many people as they can. Like, uh, and they don't usually go for second dates, whether they even want to or not as such. It's just something about having m- a lot rather than the quality, which for me, like, blows my mind. But I don't get it. we have said, like, wanting hookup is fine, but then you establish before you get to this kind of situation that you're both okay with it just being a hookup. Yeah. It sounds to me like what you wanted yeah. and what the other person wanted are not on par, and that's something you should possibly discuss before you get to the bedroom sitch. But even if it is just a hookup, like, it really fucking depends what kind of hookup it mm-hmm. is. Jesus, like for instance, yeah, like you, you, you can be like the dom to their sub, but like that doesn't mean that you just like want them to do all of these things for you. Like, no. Oh God. Yeah, being a sub does not mean just giving head and with no return. By yeah. the way. Yeah. Like. Oh yeah, but it's like it's, apparently it's out there like this. Yeah. It's crazy. It's no. really bad. Now I've been like reading way more. Well, I guess since we're in the this economy in this industry, <laughs> just reading people's experiences, mm-hmm. and it's like. Well, not just reading. Uh, anyway, so we, yeah. we do our research in our yeah. own ways as well. But uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's dark out there, man. Yeah. It's real dark. And yet, like, in my positive, like, BDSM groups and stuff, there's so many ways of being a sub where the sub also gets pleasure. And, like, and I don't just mean, like, okay, like, you can get turned on by giving someone a low job, you can just get turned on by fucking coming, and, like, both are good. And, yes, like, 100%. This is not a saying that, like, people don't want to, like, like, I think, I don't know, should we go into that? I just, fuck it, just to finish off, like, I mean, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> it, we've been socialized where where it, the idea is that like yeah, w- w- women don't necessarily want to get blowjobs or that sort of stuff. But that's not the case. But it doesn't mean like you, even if we do do that, like that doesn't mean that we were gonna do it like as intensely as you want. Uh, it's just like yeah. I don't know. It's just so many, so many, so many. So like many yeah, things. if someone says slow down, slow down. Yeah. And read their signals, and if you really want to see them again hold it off to the next day and they'll show you if they, that's not what they meant 
Yeah, and also maybe ask. yeah, show show the magic of how great you are, you know, so that they definitely want to take things past next time around, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Sorry, yeah. not not that much more that we can. Yeah, say use consent. Use your mind. <laughs> Be good, be flirty, I don't know. Just yeah, know be flirty, but don't be creepy. No, like, but it's not, oh God, it's not that hard. Or maybe it is. Oh, maybe it know. is, though. I think it is. I think it a lot is, of it, it is, is unspoken is. signal, but we've also covered it in a lot of episodes. Yeah, no, to be fair, it is really hard because there are so many people that I thought, like, yeah. should be really into me, but they're not. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah exactly. Like, what you think of a signal is actually someone being nice or vice versa. So, yeah, yeah it, is, it is hard. But if you're, if someone has literally managed to verbalise that takes off slow, then rely on them to verbalise when they want to change their mind. Good luck. She said. Be good. Don't be a dick. Yeah, let's go. Love the show. Bit Thank of a weird. Thank you, by the way. Thank it's you. It's so nice when you say that because honestly, mm. like, I don't know how to say this. Like, I obsess over like YouTube, like uh, stats and a bit on Reddit and all of that stuff. And um, but that's all the that's all the sort of contact that we have with any of you. I have no. We have no idea who's watching this. We know a couple yeah. of our friends are watching this, but that's pretty much it. So thank you so much when you take the time to say that you like the show. Yeah. Like it's huge for us. It, it really is. is. Okay, bit of a weird question. Is it okay to masturbate over someone's Instagram pictures? Yes! <laughs> okay, so I obviously, oh, if they're over, over the age of consent, obviously, yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously yeah. Jesus fucking yeah, Christ. That's, yeah. so, but that's me, subjectively, completely. Look, I mean, I think it's absolutely ridiculous to think that people um, don't fan... Okay. Let me rephrase this. It's like, it doesn't have to be an Instagram picture. Any sort of content that is put out there, even words, of course people will like really, really desire that if that's something that they're into. And um, I'm, I find this really vanilla, actually. What just You can actually get off off just an Instagram picture? Like, that's amazing to me. Yeah, right. It's like back it's in the day when people would like pass around a Playboy magazine yes! between their friends. So this is to me the cutest thing ever. But like the fact that it's just the one picture, it's not moving. But maybe they flick through a lot. I don't know, maybe they... Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. I mean, also, you have a lot of, like, um, like sex workers and porn people in on Instagram doing, like, very sexy Instagram stuff. And also, like, Absolutely. little jiggly videos and stuff. Also, like, a lot of stuff is subconscious. Like, you know, so many people that, like, I've just seen, I haven't even thought that they're attractive. Or, like, I just... And then I dream them. And I have, like, mm. really nice sexual dreams about them. Or some people that I do actually fancy. And then I have even more stupidly sexual dreams around them. Yeah, about I had a sexual them, right? dream about Marianne recently. And of another person who I know only vaguely in context. And it was very... But the, I, I'm actually... Thank you for even vocalizing that now, but even in, in in the past, because I've like I've I've done this to you like that that sort of thing more than you've been like very like this to me, but like for the first time. Oh, that's <laughs> you, know, you don't really Not like that physical contact though. You don't really like hugs and stuff. No, you don't. No, you don't. I say I do that. You don't do that. <laughs> We're having a lovers quarrel. <laughs> <laughs> See, someone's oh, gonna fat for that. No, I'm kidding. No, <laughs> we don't assume that. We don't assume that. Okay, so yeah. can, I give, can I give my take? Yeah, yeah, so oh, no, you, no, just to finish it, it's just like a lot of the time desires are not, uh, you know, they, they come out of nowhere, it doesn't have to be an Instagram yeah. picture, it doesn't have to be any picture, and sometimes they're completely involuntary, and it is absolutely ridiculous to think that um, if you put some sort of image out there that someone is not thinking out there, that that's like hot. Okay, so my take is actually still yes, but yes with potential ethical questions. Let's go. So the, the definite yes is Insta celebs. Fine. Like, yeah, right, you know, right, they've made right. a career out of being sexy on Instagram. That is their career. They put themselves out there. It's the same like if I if I jack off to, I don't know, Kira Knightley and Pirates of the Caribbean. I mean, not my type, but I couldn't think of any other women. <laughs> uh, then, you know, it's whatever. So Winner the rider. <laughs> um, yeah. That's like, it's kind of like they have made a public persona. The, where, the way, the place, the place where I'm a bit more not sure of the ethics is people you know because in one of my groups recently there was someone who was like oh i caught my boyfriend um jacking off over the facebook pictures of my friends and i heard this somewhere yeah, i feel like it probably, probably happened more a lot. yeah and it was like that thing of like yes you're putting your facebook picture out there but you're not putting like to what okay to what, i guess it's the question that like, i'm not sure of the answer to what extent is like Putting it out there, relinquishing your claim or your right to pri privacy. You know, I just don't, I just don't I know. know. Of course, I mean that as well as in like, of course, like one shouldn't always assume that any sort of content we put out there, someone's going to touch themselves to. And yet, 
you know there's that phrase it's like come up with anything you want there's probably a, a part of it, of it yeah. right so that's how it is it's like you may think i don't know this is not a very good setup because we are kind of like i guess overtly sexualized or whatever more than we should be but like someone could just post a picture of a map and you can yeah. i can think of how someone would think that this is a vagina well and, and this is the question right the baltic sea of the vagina because like say like okay i'm like masturbating in bed and i'm masturbating thinking of a person i met at a party that i think is really hot that's not a lacking consent right that's just well me yeah that's the thing it's the same thing it's the same thing and yet for some reason i feel like it's and it's yet just, why it's just that now we have access to pictures right so like that boyfriend so you know kind of saw the pictures and then touched themselves to that but um realistically it's like they they just are they just fancy your friends that's the it's thing not right the pictures, they it's, just fancy your yeah, friends that's the thing that's with them being like a shit boyfriend who should maybe like i don't know not do that no, but then, okay wait that. but okay yeah, yeah, yeah no exactly, i take it right? back i take it back no, yeah. As in, yeah like okay so what if it is a secret fantasy it's like they're absolutely an incredible boyfriend to you they fucking love you they look after you all of those things and yet That's they the touch thing. themselves to your friends we both think that it's it's possible to like fancy more than one person at once so why be but that's the about thing it? honestly like i think this is also again a bit subjective because we are like of po- of polyamorous context so we abs- we can totally internalize i don't know we, we 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 fundamentally understand how it is not infidelity when someone thinks of other people in but, sexual and ways. yet i have to be honest with myself and maybe this is problematic or something but i would be more upset if i caught my boyfriend masturbating over pictures of you than I would if I caught him masturbating over pictures of Kira Knightley. No, but it's because I guess I, but, but, but I'm, though I'm not, I'm more of a possibility than Kira Knightley, right? Though I'm not. But I don't think that's. I guess because if it's friends, if it's like known it's people, possible. It's like why are they with me then? Am I just the fallback because they couldn't get ex friend? I feel like there's more like a social dynamic come into play. But then yeah, it's the same as your boyfriend saying that he fancies one of your friends. So it's like yeah, yeah again it's. Yeah, it's not the picture. Uh, to me, like the picture stuff is yeah. kind of irrelevant. It's like they just, they just fancy someone else. Yeah. Or, or, but yeah. Again, I honestly, I, I have never. I don't think I've ever touched myself to a picture. It was either a video or nothing at all. Mm. Something yeah, about what I do in my head flat. is much is much better than. Yeah, again, like, even in your head is video, right? Yeah, it's definitely video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not like well, not to say my head is video. Like it's probably more like gifs. <laughs> yeah, my as head as is a, gifs as is well. Like, <laughs> Yeah, that bit, that bit, that bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. literally. <laughs> I'm repeating every whole Oh my god, that's so true. I'm yeah. running for my gifts in my head. Yeah. Yeah, literally. <laughs> so oh. yeah, I guess I guess for me the, the the question is not so much about the picture, it's about the closeness. But even then I don't know where I stand because I think I think practically I stand with you. But I think not emotionally, to say that it's super annoying. No, it's yeah. absolutely terrible. Emotionally, I stand on the side of I can't really fucking do that, and I would potentially even no, but not that's be with not that in person. The question though, like, like I mean, no. as in, like that, that's the sort of situation you've had. I suppose you've no, I've never had that, that situation. Group. No, but no, but have you, you've read in that group as in like that's the, the yeah about like oh my friends. Yeah, no, I think if someone if I found out that like unbeknownst to me, my partner actually fancies. Well, my friends, I'd be upset. I'd be super upset. I'd be like, okay, well, you know, just go for it. Like, you know, that's yeah, right. Of yeah, hundred percent. Looking good, sleep a little already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly too. what I would be doing. But um, <laughs> but that's not the issue at hand. That's yeah. not the issue at the, hand. The the ethics of Instagram per se. Like I said, we have images on our head. We have images on TV. Yeah. We fantasize about whoever we fucking fantasize. Yeah. Like, yeah. As long as it's you know. People are of consent of age. and all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Age of consent and like. Um, yeah, I don't know. Are we are we on the right side of history right now? I feel like we have to be. I feel the like whole no economy is based on sex. Like, yeah. Jesus Christ! Like, there is a reason why the people that have the most Instagram followers are the ones that are posing the most stereotypically yeah. attractive. Like, and pictures. you know, obviously, don't contact them. Don't tell them oh, you're wanking over them. Don't make them in any way know that you're doing this because yeah. that's gross as fuck. But no. like, we can't control. Our don't make fantasies. your partners do it. No. Any of that. Like, no. Look, look. Literally, it's kind of similar to. Yeah, to like. Any sort of content out there, like whether that's video, whether that's porn, it's just something yeah. in between sometimes. I don't, but I just wonder, like, why would anyone say, like, no, it's not okay? I think because the person posting the images hasn't posted them for that purpose. Yes. And therefore it's, you're sexualizing someone without their consent. I guess that, I think that's the argument. Yeah, you're sexualizing someone without their consent. But we're consent. constantly sexualizing people without their we, consent. We are constantly sexualizing people Should we people not be doing that? Consent. Should we only, se- like, okay, in like, 
in the anarchist utopia or whatever, sure. do we see everyone as neutral until proven that they have consented to you viewing them sexually? Is that what we want? Like, you know, like theoretically. <laughs> that's a that's a traffic light party. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're hosting a traffic light party. By the way, at some yeah, point. We, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know what I mean? Like, like, should we, are we actually trying to unlearn the fact that we're sexualizing people when we just meet them? Because I feel like that's A, impossible, and B, I don't know if that's my utopia. I think it's impossible, and I don't think that's my utopia either. Yeah. Uh, but maybe we're wrong. I don't know, if you think we're wrong, right? And like, I just, why? I think honestly, like, it's just the sort of reality I never even thought about, mm. so this is why it's so difficult. I think the thing that's problematic is acting on it, like catcalling, yes, harassing people, course, that's what's Jesus. problematic, not having sexual thoughts. Yeah. Objectifying, reducing them only to that thing and then letting them know that you've done that. Yeah. Bad. Bad. Like, cheating. Yeah. And, or yeah, like, not, okay, also like, uh, objectifying them in, the, in that sort of manner if they're your colleague and then, for mm. instance, they reject you and then you're not like, hire like you're not hiring yeah. them or like you're not promoting them because you fucking fancy them yeah. though they said no to you and then you're like fucking are, are like somehow i don't know insulted by that mm. so that person has no future in your company or whatnot like shitty behavior mm -hmm. go do one like oh yeah. but yeah jacking off because you find someone's picture hot i mean if that works for you i'm kind of jealous I yeah yeah 100 percent. like just the still image for me that's like, mm, tricky tricky yeah. tricky yeah 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 really yeah. tricky yeah, yeah. I can't, don't think, don't think I can do it. I mean, again, it shows how, like, spoiled, I guess, we are now. Because I, I have this amazing book of, like, it's a, a photographic album of Victorian porn, which mm. is just still images. And honestly, I think it's because I can tell just how... To me, it's way sexier than any of, like, today's Instagram bullshit, oh, yeah. right? Because I, I can tell just how much love and desire has been put into those pictures and just how like the i think the whole atmosphere about building it and just how important mm. that picture it is for someone and they're very graphic in that yeah like that's me so no, victorian porn's great Ooh. like i have this book by annie Ooh. Nin, which is um she's an erotica writer mm -hmm. and she uh it was like 1920s or 30s i think around that time and she um wrote these like beautiful erotic stories and they were illustrated with these images of women on couches and stuff yes. and they were just fucking beautiful oh. like yeah and also like, and again, they were like, oh, it was ridiculous, right? A lot of them, so, well, yeah, I guess, plumper than right yeah. now. They and have bushes. Oh, totally have bushes. And, and again, a so the... arousing. Like, okay, for me, one of the sexiest things is like suspenders and a garter belt and then like a full bush. Oh. Because I'm just like, it's like the hidden, it's like the same reason suspenders are sexy, right? Is that like, I'm wearing suspenders, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> is that like, it's the hiddenness of it and yet it's exposed. See, that's the thing. If I have my bra, you should have your suspenders, man. Because for me, it's the boobs and for you, it's the yeah, legs, right? but I've got them right? on inside out because I wasn't paying attention. So it's a little bit, um, you know, you can see the seams, which is not the point. No, but I guess that's... Oh, look, I gave him a flash. <laughs> <laughs> sue us. <laughs> <laughs> don't sue us. <laughs> yeah, okay, I think we're... Yeah, Yeah, but no, but this is uh, just the sort of finally mm. kind of like... I th yeah, it's kind of fascinating for me to think that, yeah, that sort of stuff turns us both up. To me, it was mm. like flowers around like naked mm. people and that's... Oh. And I guess black and white, you can't yeah. even tell, you know, but it's just like that, I could... Uh, that's probably those are the yeah. images I could probably go there. I mean, uh, I used to I don't think I would just like in, look at it and then like... I'm saying, I would still have to like close my eyes and imagine like a gif. <laughs> well, that's, why, that's why this book was so good because it was like the erotic stories and then the uh, images so I could like think of the story and look right, at the image yeah, and right, I had right, the whole right. like, mm. it was so great. There's some of like women and cats that were really good. I'm, I'm not a furry, but it was really good. Yeah. Be like a naked woman on a couch with her cat sitting there really stately. Honestly, today's erotica is boring as fuck. It's, I've been going on like um, erotica lit or whatever it's called, lit erotica. It's fucking shit. I got more on my Harry Potter fanfiction than I do on that website. It's yeah. balls. Yeah, we literally have Instagram models, anime. Mm. If anyone wants to recommend some good erotica, please do, because I'm gasping out here. <gasps> that was my gasp. All right, let's go. All right, it's your what turn, did right? Did I see? No, did I have Oh, yeah, did you have anything? <laughs> yeah, no, I literally just have yes! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, wow, this this one's... Uh, yeah. yeah, you should have probably been more so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but like... No, it's, it's, it's a fascinating question. Okay, anyways, let's go. Often feel like the discussion around dating and transness is limited only to people who are trans ourselves, and it can feel like a really isolated discourse. So I'm curious to hear your honest perspectives as anarchists doing interesting work around dating culture who aren't trans. Do either of you have experience dating trans and non-binary partners? If not, is there a reason? Would you? 
when would you want a partner to disclose their transness? And is that different depending on where in their transition they are? What is the place of non-binary and trans relationships in the queer community that outwardly appear to be or are straight? Now remember that is this question that I want to talk about the femme stuff. Um, so just just to begin really quick. Can I just sorry clarify Absolutely. the last line? Um, what do you mean that the people who are like passing as straight? Is I that found the that difficult bit? to read as well. What is the place of non-binary and trans relationships in the queer community that outwardly appear to be or are oh, straight? Okay, so gotcha. like a trans partner and a partner of the opposite gender who are together and they seem like a straight couple. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that's what it means. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Great right. question. Thank Great you question. so much. And thank you for also um, recognizing that it's scary for us as non-trans people to enter this territory well because okay so so this is the thing it's like uh, it's limited only to people who are trans ourselves and can feel like a really isolated discourse it, i i appreciate they can feel like a really isolated discourse and yet there is a reason why it's only limited to people who are trans ourselves what it, how is it our space for like you know two cis girls that are i don't know i guess in lots of privileges like enjoying a lot of privileges that that, that we do enjoy cis people to be giving any sort of like input into this discourse necessarily because like a lot of the time we are told off for even saying anything as such like for a good fucking reason because yeah. like we you know it is not a place and the, to the question of like how we paid have we uh, dated trans or non-binary people yes i have i have dated a non-binary person very very seriously for nearly a year um it didn't work out in the end mostly mostly actually because of caste issues because like i think which kind of sounds bad but like i don't know i don't honestly kind of honestly didn't like they blame someone who i know who's an awesome like working class woman that like she every now and then like and it, like her english was like her third language every now and then she used the like about three times used the wrong pronoun and like my non-binary person was like really really crap to them over that like really bad like kick them out of the house and shit like that and like i just couldn't like i just found it too much so so what does that say like i don't know like so look at the sort of i guess in uh i don't think but the thing is is that that's not because they're non-binary it's because they were a shitty person like it would just it happened to be that we couldn't work out because of that so basically i don't really i don't how this is gonna sound so fucking basic like i don't really look at the person's like pers you know at the how the person that identifies themselves it's just like whether they're a good person or not do i fancy trans people yes i do i have right? yes i do <laughs> all the time do i have i dated many of them no i haven't because first of all don't know that many of them second of all even within the ones that i know do i like the, the whole of them some i do some i don't same, same with, with everyone, everyone else <laughs> So, yeah, so so that's... Uh, sorry, I'm giving sort of yeah, a personal yeah, yeah, one it. here. Maybe you will do the same. I'm going to go in. This is yeah. my... Be, um, uh, so, so kind of like I have to answer it individually. Um, uh, when would you want the partner to disclose their transness? Is that different, different depending on where in their transition they are? I don't care. I don't know. And I know some people really do care about, like, that that stuff as in, like, oh, you know, I'm trans, or, like, oh... Because like, it's really important for some, for sure. Like, for me, it's like... Are you, get, are you a good lay? Are you hot? And, like, are you, are you funny? And are you nice? And I know that there's a whole discourse about, you know, like, passing and all of that stuff, you know, for for real, really fucking good reason. Um, I, I don't know, just... I just dream of ambitious <laughs> people that are, like... Yeah, funny and kind, and like some of them happen to be trans, some of them happen to be non-binary, some of them I hooked up with, some of them I haven't. Um, so it wasn't really, wasn't really that big of a I don't know, and I, that's not to raise experiences of people for which is like a huge deal, or or, or like of people that have felt that for others it's a huge deal because I don't really care for people that like really would be like oh no yeah, you're trans person like, no babes like. Ugh. Just find you. It's like the same, but they just bullshit. Um, so yeah, that's the honest perspective. I feel like I, oh yeah, with the last bit, it's like, what is the place of non-binary and trans relationships in the queer community that outwardly appear to be or are straight? Um, I don't have a, a, an answer to this because the queer community can be fucking snappy and as fuck. And also, there's this whole thing that um, I have a lot of disagreements with a lot of London queer community. A lot of them are like 
middle class, like judgmental, like overeducated fucks that like. So it was like you don't look queer enough. Yeah. So that's what I was gonna say, Mm. and this is where the conversation about feminist comes in, right? So I think I think it's okay to say that uh, recently you've asked one of our friends, you know, um, you know, where, 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 you know, where should I go out, you know, as a queer in London, you know? Yeah, that's I want I'm, I'm new to London. I want to meet more queer people because most of them are anarcho, and most of them happen to be boys. Yeah, yeah, and they literally were like, "You're too femme." Yeah, they're like, "You're literally." They like, didn't assume that I was queer. Yeah, and they're a queer person who supposedly is meant to have no, no, no judgment to them. But like, as queers, we supposedly have the politics that we don't judge anyone. Blah yeah. blah blah. Except people that look straight because they're cunts and they should not exist. Yeah, we have <laughs> also been told off for like for the show that we're too femme dangerous. But like for you, like yeah, literally queer person. It's like you're too femme. So like no one's gonna like people are either not gonna be into you and or. Like, uh, you're going to be intimidating to be dated as such. I mean, this, is this is not to compare in any shape or form people that are going through absolutely... Yeah, my struggle is not the same as a trans person oh God, by no, any stretch of even. the mark. Absolutely. But, like, the, the question of appearing as, as a straight couple, I can relate to. Yeah, it's that bit, and, that last bit. And, yeah. Um, yeah, like... It, <laughs> Yeah, it's balls. It sucks. I keep using, like, very genital-based insults. I feel like, is that bad? Balls sucks. Uh, Can't I well, I always go like X as dicks, right? So I do oh, that true. too, I yeah, think. I yeah. yeah, we so hate apologies. all judges equally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. yeah okay. but I guess we're definitely in a bubble because we have kind of... We've been able to somewhat... I have to... I don't, look, I lived in the country where up until well I moved here when I was 17 I'd say I haven't seen a trans person pretty much until I was like 19 I really just haven't so do you think I did not have to unlearn all sorts of like curiosity and then like whoa but how does this work of course I fucking have like I was not born mm. like with these politics or even this like acceptance because it was like something that I've never seen you know like real talk for real it's like I just wasn't yeah, I had this, my, I told you my whole fucking story from a couple of years back where, um, you know, where uh, the entire of the school, like, called me a lesbian and I had to, I went through a neighbor's breakdown. Like, is this whole thing for reals? So I'm not just, like, being like, oh, yeah, I'm just don't care with you, like, you know, cis or trans or nobody. Like, I, I, now I really don't. But we arrived was, at that point. We arrived at that point for reals. It was, like, a journey. I will say, I will admit that it was, like, a journey. But you know what? Like, Honestly, again, it's not even a journey, and then you're right, like, and you're like, I've learned it all. It's no. really you just like you see a I'm hot person, as well. and then you're like, they're f- funny, hilarious, gorgeous, and like respectful and great politics, and they happen to be trans or they happen to be non-binary, mm. and I think probably that's like the last sort of unlearning, like level or whatever it is. But like, then you just fucking, oh, you just fancy people. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. Like, I'm like openly queer, and you have. <laughs> have experiences and so like to me someone's genitals do not matter in the slightest of like whether I find them attractive or not like I you know I suck dick I like pussy like and I like it all I like it all but like I do understand where this question is coming from because yeah, like, okay so this isn't for you questioner because I'm pretty sure you know about this but this is for anyone watching this video there is a fantastic Facebook group that we will link underneath called sounds like you need to be educated on transgender individuals but okay where people Fuck, ask, maybe I do need to yeah, because I'm not that brilliant. <laughs> because people ask, okay, so I'll be real. Like, I have had some quite um, uh, scary experiences with some people who happen to be trans where they have been super mean to me. And oh, but that's just that person. No, that, no but that, like, there was like, um, there is like a. In the, in the circles we move in, the London squatting scene primarily, there are a lot of trans people. And I, I jumped into that at the age of, I don't know, say 20. And like, again, went through a lot of unlearning like Mariam did. I'm so sorry. But I had a very difficulty in articulating my circumstance because I understood that they were more marginalised than me and I was less marginalised. And I had a, very, a lot of difficulty in asserting the fact that they were mean to me because of that. And I think I kind of, in my head, overplayed the like oppression olympic thing and underplayed my own actual fact that this is just not a nice person who's not nice to me and so i think i've now gone past that to like yeah to like you say like if someone's a dick they're a dick and like what their like gender versus sex ratio is doesn't fucking matter like no. someone's either nice or they're or they're an asshole and uh, yeah but we also mentioned that so sorry that there's this one bit of uh, some of our videos that we also mentioned about like queer as fake that Steffo was a fashion a couple of years back not as much anymore but this is such a scene three bullshit mm. like this is not to do with because I think the question that is here is literally like would you be bothered and this is very much in the real world outside even of the left 
that you like I don't know like dated someone and found out that they're trans at some point I have again through internet and everything like sometimes I've, I've read a lot of people's tinder stories and they go like oh my god I was with this girl like everything was perfect she was hot as fuck and it's just like oh and then you know fell a bone or whatever it's just like and that was a deal breaker so I can totally understand how that discourse is out there yeah as gross as it is um I cannot say that personally have that no and again like in this Facebook group I mentioned there's a lot of people asking like at what stage should you like reveal that you're trans and it's both like cis people and trans people answering and it's very interesting because a lot of these people are like, I don't care, but others are like, I might want to know by the time that we're about to have um Oh children like, or sex. something like that. No. Oh I guess that's, I that's sex, later on. Children. <laughs> Jesus. Um <laughs> No, but like what if you want to plan to have like but then again, yeah, like it's about caring, right? Like, like rather than Yeah, but that's like way that. later down the road. Like the point is like by that point you already know what your partner's like gender well, slash sex <laughs> thing <laughs> is. But yeah, like there there are differing opinions on this. Again, as a queer person who doesn't really care what gender tools the person I'm with has doesn't make a difference to me. I have, I guess, like you asked us, so I have also, um, I dated a non-binary person, it ended because <laughs> um, I got blood poisoning on one of our dates. Oh God. Yeah, what I will say, which is maybe like, I don't know, maybe a bit more like risky or whatever, but I did have, um, when it came to having sex with this person, I will admit that I was more um, maybe careful and uncertain than I, than I might have been with a cis person. So, for example, they were wearing a binder, but they also said to me, like, do whatever you want to me. But I didn't know, like, how to navigate those two things, because I don't want to, like, touch someone's chest when they're wearing a binder unless I have explicit knowledge. Because, like, some people don't want their chest touched, yeah. and that makes perfect sense. And also, like, some, like, trans people are, like, uncomfortable at the genitals they currently have or whatever. And so I felt, I did, I, I did feel very um, nervous about the way that was done. And I think I probably, at the time, could have done more to ask along the way and in the end they took off their binder themselves and so it was kind of okay I know what I'm doing here now <laughs> like but it, yeah I, I will admit it was a more I guess scary in a different way because like having sex with straight men is also uh, straight cis men I might add is more scary because there's like the whole like he could sexually assault me thing right but I it was like more about the idea I, I guess I'd never had as strong a worry of invading someone's bodily autonomy or making them feel uncomfortable whilst I was still getting the signals of like I'm really turned on I want to have sex with you I, I had not before had that feeling of like I might do something well, that's problematic for a good reason of course it's like, yeah. just like the, the we just had a 50th anniversary of Stonewall right mm. so how much it, like you know the the gay community has gone through in the past 50 years like where are we now is huge but I would say we're probably in the first 10 years or like 15 years of discourse in a really serious mainstream manner, even less mm. than that maybe, of like of, of, of issues to do with trans community. I mean, so the last five years it's really like emerged in the UK yeah, and in a very shit way. way. Yeah, well, like, that as well, yeah. yeah. But yeah, Tasco it is. Tasco do one. Yeah, Tasco um, do one, but like it is now a topic of mainstream discourse. And even on my Facebook groups, not But I understand I basically, well, what would one. have anxiety as in? Like, I, yeah. basically you were saying you do and for a good fucking reason. And uh, but uh, even I like for instance, on a, uh, what I uh, you know I said in my story with my ex and that and it's just I tolerated it for longer than I should have. Yeah, yeah because it's it's and it's because of that yeah. guilt as well. And I, yeah, and I, yeah, and it's the same with me and the person that was bullying me and me finding it really hard to articulate that yeah. they were in fact just being unpleasant to me and it was nothing to do with yeah. that. But the, look, this is the, this the, this is it. But now we're having to like paint this in a sort of negative sense because like you know our 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 relationships with those people ended as many of our relationships with dudes have ended and as many of our relationships with women have ended so those have ended and we're talking about why basically kind of saying that it's not because they're trans it's because they were shitty people yeah and um this is kind of how we're looking at dating people it's just like yeah um, I don't care if you're trans. No. Like, I mean, I understand it's a big deal for you, but yeah, like, 100%. it would not make me decide whether or not I'm like aroused by you or attracted by no. you. What would make me decide is the way in which we get on. Yeah, like, we get on. Do yeah. we get on? Do we not get on? That's pretty. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, whether you're, you know, you stereotypically, I don't know, well, in my stereotypical way, whether you like help for me and like your style and your sense of humor, and whether you're like you're gonna bang me up on quake. Yeah. I mean, I will say one thing: is that like. Like, like with this hookup, like one of the questions is like, 
if you wouldn't date them, why wouldn't you? I would. But I would definitely feel less confident going into dating a trans person than I would going into dating a cis person, purely because I have had less experience with that. Yeah. And I know that there are more potential like triggers or problematic yeah. things that I could accidentally say or do. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so, yeah, I would, I I would be more, I would be much more careful and scared, I think, of hurting the other person oh. than I do when I date cis people. But that is also something that I think, I think what's hard is change. Yeah. Exactly. Like I did the first time I dated like a cis woman, I was like, I've never done this before. It's totally different, but yeah. it's actually not. And it's like, yeah. So yeah, yeah like the of, just like to really very meager things. Like the first time I'm even with different people with different nationalities. Yeah, such, which is like absolutely different. Like I don't know, but essentially, smaller, like actually, just like still learning the fact that every single person is different and have different needs, even if yeah. they happen to be I don't know a cis straight white boy, they're still not the same as Honestly. the last cis straight white boy. Yeah. So actually. Everyone's in the yeah. Having more hesitancy in every single relationship yeah. is not a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. And then again, there, there have also been relationships. It's just like, but no, I, I, a cis straight boy is way more insecure, way more sensitive as such than you know, like a, a confident like non-binary queer babe. You know, mm. that's just like that is like just like going for it. It's like yeah. so. And I know again, we're totally in the bubble here because we understand that our 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 uh, experiences are different. Um, than many other people so that have not necessarily met them, uh, you know, met people from the trans community mm. in their dating scene. But uh, the question was for us, and I think we've answered it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, when would you want to partner to close the trans list whenever they want? Yeah. Mm. What is the place of non-binary translations in the queer community that already appears to be straight? Fucking it. central, like every other uh, like relationship that doesn't like seem queer. Fucking do one, mm -hmm. do one mm -hmm. full mm -hmm. queer bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's the same as like with the, le you know, there's the leftist community, and we always go like, get out of that. So yeah. It's a lot of the time, same with the queer community. It's like just stop with the aesthetics Olympics. <laughs> that's that's the yeah. worst Olympics out there. Yes. Like yes. who can look the most? I, I understand also if like more people want to embrace a certain queer aesthetic than others, that's sure. fine. But then don't assume that just because I'm dressed like Mary Poppins, she didn't also have good lesbian fun because she probably did. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And same with the yeah, like the the you know the. The gay dudes that are just you know that are like look super fucking mm. i know match on their own ways and they, they're still that anyways i will say though and i think that's a mistake that we've done today but it was um yeah as we said i think uh, we've been asked privately to well i know i have uh to kind of use but i think yes. this is not the no, same but they say though non yeah in it's the trans question. and non-binary because we've been we've been uh for a good reason been educated to say more like women and other marginalized genders but i don't think this was necessarily about women and other marginalized well, they genders. specifically was, like, talked about trans, trans and non-binary non so we kind of like we didn't want to like educate you on your language <laughs> but, not to say that that's not really but that's what we've like, been told yeah but i think in other questions we have actually done that not mm -hmm. in this particular episode it's just that this particular question was asking yeah. that other than women and other um no, but i think that's if you're talking about like everything inclusive as a whole. Yeah, whereas, outside of the cis dude as such, whereas this yeah. is different. But, um, yeah, like, yeah, if you haven't joined that Facebook group already, people who are watching that on the questionnaire, because I'm assuming they know, it's a really, really good one to yeah. sit and watch for the first, like, I sit and watch for the first six months in any Facebook group, and I learn so much from the questions people ask and the answers they're given, and it's just, it's just a really great group. It sounds kind of, like, sassy in the title, but actually it's, like, genuinely, if you want to be educated, on like trans issues it's a really good place to go and there are so many other resources out there as well like sister not sister is a really amazing uk mm. group that um educate and organize around like trans rights and like their inclusion in the broader movement they're fantastic um and i'm sure there's other ones in like other countries but thank you so much for asking this, yeah though, because like, these are the sort of really unique questions that we really sort of crave for mm. no but, okay i take my words back a little bit because Though we're now kind of becoming more popular on BreadTube, we're getting more of a Once. lefty questions. Once. Maybe next time. Uh, but, we also um, like the, the questions about like tips and stuff. We yeah. like all of the questions. What's up? Yeah, yeah. But basically, I guess, I guess uh, I've, been, I've been being like, oh, they're more like, you know, different than just like, how do I date? But this is me actually changing my tech because at first I was very, very keen on those questions to do with like abandoned since this is boys, whereas this is a lot different. But also, I do actually Diversity like... Diversity of tactics! But like, despite the fact that we keep getting questions on like, how do I date, it shows how prevalent, how many people there are that want to date in a feminist way and don't know how, which is actually yeah. really cool because they have, sense. yeah, they have the desire to do it. And so even though we're like, oh, repeat question, actually it's really fucking cool that they are trying to change their behaviors. Like, I would rather we get 20 repeat questions than people who pretend they know the answer and end up going and doing something problematic. That, but also even these sort of questions that like, hopefully they, you know, watch the full episode and then they can kind of like, 
they will be educated enough on so many other different sexual issues as is and they will be able to utilize them in their own dating lives even though it seems like foreign to them Mm. it really isn't yeah so okay cool i hope you're the last one uh no (laughs) as if is this the last one this This is the last one okay Badoom. hello first i'd like to say thank First, I'd love to say that I love your show. Thank you. Again, really important to hear. Mm -hmm. It's helped me to understand a a lot about myself and the world. Jesus Christ. Wow. That's... Yeah. Thank you. Wow, man. Yeah. That's huge, right? That's really fucking nice. And it's so cool that you've, like, actually taken on board what we've said, which... You know, but we're just two people, but... Yeah, strip away the the silly outfits and the booze and the, the, the smokes and all everything. We are really just like two little girls that are also in the maze of this yeah. really weird fucking dating scene. Um, yeah, we're, we don't you know, pretend to be experts. We're trying everything. to be your mate. Like, like, yeah, that's really cool. think that we've been so helpful. Yeah, thank you. And the one recently, I was an agoraphobic uh, needs. Agoraphobia is people basically that are, are afraid of big spaces or a lot of people. And who, need is, again, like we said before, not in education, employment or training. Who spend seven years doing nothing. You see, I don't believe, what does doing nothing mean? Bullshit. Even if you've got your combos on my Guilty Gear on, like, really, really good, and I already think you've done a lot. Um, I've only recently come out of my hermit lifestyle, returned to school, and started working out. Legend. I realized during your last show that while I've made progress, I embody those overly acquiesce and and, princip- and principled characteristics that you mentioned for some i'm so sorry that the video cut out there like it's just well, i was off my face and we didn't change we well, yeah, forgot that Twitter. outside there isn't actually um charging <laughs> <laughs> i've been in the closet about my bi pansexuality my anarchist politics and just about everything else for my entire life i have formed every social relationship i have by holding my tongue at almost every time i'm an anarchist who never makes trouble mm. I'm so terrified of being who I really am and blowing up every relationship I have. I have no confidence in myself. So comrades, I guess I'm asking how to build the courage to be my radical self, to speak up when my friends say ugly shit, to stand up for princ- my principles when Prince. I know they will alienate me. I'd appreciate your advice. Woo! Boop, boop, boop. I mean, love it. Yeah, I think you're already... I, yeah. think you're, I think you're... I, think I mean, it sounds there. like he's re- they are relating... <laughs> They are relating to the nice guy question. Yes. And I will say, um, just the other thing is that we had two quite long responses to the nice guy question in our private messages that we're not going to read out because they are just responses, not questions. But we are going to post them underneath the nice guy video. So they're really interesting. You should check them out. Yeah. Um. Right. Lots of things. Okay. Should I? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. You. Should. I love that you have notes. No, it's no, a good no. starting point for the <laughs> discussion. So I'm like. Uh, no, no, okay, yeah. Oh my god, wait, 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 wait. Is this the one I'm looking at? Okay. Yes, so. Yeah, you don't want to become self righteous since you're an arco, so I always say so. Excellent. No, but that, that, that's so true, and. But like, it's cool that he's like aware of that. So, okay, so first of all, definitely want to. Uh, First of all, we'll go do the bad points and then we'll arrive to good points, mm. as we do. So, yeah, thank you so much for finally uh, recognizing that you are, like, for nothing. Because people, like, your past self, I'll say, I always think, like, would I trust someone like that behind the barricades? No, I wouldn't. What do you mean for nothing? Sorry? Trust that you're for nothing. Uh, would I trust that sort of person uh, behind the barricades? What, what, what sort of person, sorry? This, so, so, so they're explaining that how they used to be and they want to become like this, right? Okay, how they so used to be was... Was basically spineless, would always yeah, stay sharp. Yeah, okay, like got it, got it, got it. doesn't do any And trouble. they want to change, yeah. And they want to change. Got it, got it, sorry. So, yeah. I um, spaced out for a second, no, no, no. sorry guys. No, no, no. Uh, so yeah, so uh, thank you so much for actually recognizing that you're that guy because I'm like, mm. yeah, I would definitely I think like, what if shit kicks off tomorrow? Like, would I trust you behind the back race? No, I fucking wanna. Not to say that as the only fucking way to be is like, you know, Mortal Kombat, uh, you know, out there and such. But you know, like, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I, I like to say I'm like important in the revolution, but the first people that start firing are probably be hiding for the first half an hour and then come out. Like, I mean, I'd do a gun. I'd do a gun. I would do a gun. I'd be a sniper. Or I'm something. scared of dying. Like, you know, there's that footage of me from that event that is. Um, no, we know. won't mention that I'm at. But uh, there's this point in it. It's filmed from the um, police helicopters, 
and where the, the they all suddenly arrive, the baddies, and then you see me running off into the park, and then about 30 seconds later, I run back and I join everyone else, but I will not lie, I fucking freaked out and was scared I was gonna die, and I did have that immediate moment of like, not Fair being, play. Not being Fair strong. Play. Fair play. And so I just wanna say like, being scared of conflict is like understandable. Overcoming that fear and going back out and joining your comrades is a really great feeling because you're like, yeah. okay, you know, I'm Chucky in the in the Rugrats. Like, yeah. I'm scared, but I'll do it. <laughs> I heard the ways. Uh, but I just want to say like, that's a very embarrassing bit of footage, but I really like it because it shows the fact that I came back is what's important. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I, a lot of the time I'm on the sidelines just because of my size, I'm like 5'1", you know, like I'm going to be fucking useless. And yeah, there's this still that like crime thing pride in me that I just like, I like thrust myself to yeah. the front like an idiot. But well, also you shouldn't have be, good but... eyesight. Whereas I always feel like, because I wear yes, glasses, 100%. that would be like, they snap him, I'm fucked. You're fucked. Yeah, 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 yeah 100%. So yeah, that's really is it. So I have lots of pictures of me like in front of black mm -hmm. mm, like crime I'm in the like back that. going like this. <laughs> That's not true. I've done my my share of Aggie. No, a hundred percent, of course. Jesus, I'm just being. I just wanted. To, I don't know. It would be like no, but we're both. Uh, but no, no. But like, I that th 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 there's something to say as to. You know, when shit when push comes to shove, and like, in the moment where we really need to understand who our friends are or not, um, it it it, it, it these those those quiet people with like no fucking opinions that would be like, I wouldn't trust as such. So that's an issue. And yeah, so, but I don't want you to go to the other side where people are f super fucking self-righteous and like, I'm, I'm really annoyed that alt right has taken over that particular town, but like, virtue signaling is still a good term. Mm. I'm so sad that it's literally now, yeah, now apparently the alt right does it. It's really, really fucking annoying. But, um, but it's a thing. It's still a thing. It's like, yeah, people that just like, don't necessarily suffer from any sort of mm. like, real, uh, you know, lack of privileges or prejudices, or even if they do, they don't consider other ones. Or but they will be so fucking too. yeah. But they will be so fucking loud mm. about like vocalizing them, but also at the same time marginalizing a lot of people that are also suffering. Uh, but you know, a lot of the time, it, like just produces them more social capital and without any sort of self awareness or and or self deprecation or anything like that. So that's what I will say. Like for example, like the anti fascist movement. So I feel like that's what's in my head right now. Is um has made steps to become more diverse and to recognize our diversity yeah, of Yeah, right, so why are you not retweeting us, bitches? Yeah, that, but also, like, there is a space for the people that want to physically punch Nazis. Yeah. Great, I, we need them, we need yeah. them. But there is also a space for the people who are at the back, making up the body of the crowd, people that are looking after children, people that are, like, spotting, um, spotting fascist groups. There are, like, lots of different spaces which aren't frontline Aggie, where you can have a very fucking important role in the movement. Yeah. Making the fucking lunches, being a medic, being a legal observer. Like, Real talk. We need all of those people. Yeah, yeah, I think it's really encouraging for me that you are hearing what we said in the last mm -hmm. episode in regards to... Uh, the sort of people that we really, really fucking hate that if, if any sort of discourse there is or bitching between two people that like someone that I would necessarily like I would trust one like one on one to be like hyping me up and -da -da -da, and then someone's bitching about me, they would say nothing like yeah. there's nothing that like kills me more as such. And you're recognizing so you have you a other problem, which yes, is really cool. Fantastic. You know what? OK, I will say this. And I think I have that's kind of how I vaguely made my notes around make sure that i was that person i was that guy you know why because i didn't have any personality i didn't have any skill i was new to the scene i'd say my age 9 to 23 i was definitely that guy 19 to 23 uh because i just like i didn't have any self-identity i wasn't really anyone i was just another crime thinky and our call and the squatter girl like so i was definitely I mean, I was more opinionated than most. I was also a bit hated about that, but it was still, you know what? Like people that have more social capital would be bitching about someone, and I wouldn't know what it is, or like, or, or I like, or I would think this is gonna lose me social capital or not. Mm. I would shut the fuck up because I'd be like, you know, I don't, I don't really stand for anything except for like, I hate the police or I hate mm. the government, blah, which I, of course I did and I still do, but like basically I just didn't have my identity. And then what happened is that like I was able to build a voice or like not even a voice but let fuck it i'll use that word expertise expertise in something expertise in my own field and i know i have authority there and that's what gave me the confidence and the boost to be able to have strong opinions not only have strong opinions but voice my strong opinions around other issues really so your expertise here helped you build confidence here a hundred percent that's so interesting because this is not necessarily directly relevant to this absolutely it isn't but yeah because i'm like I'm, i guess it's a bit of a security blank it's like okay all of you can hate me i don't give a shit because like i'm important there mm. which is terrible no, but it's, it's kind of terrible but it's like at least i like i knew i was good at something and they gave me enough of like an ego to understand that i have 
I have an instinct mm. that's correct in something. And that's not to say, like, I'm not talking about, like, you know, the lefty celebrity whores that are just now, like, r- kind of ruined. Is that bad? Yeah. Yeah. So, but, yeah. I think so. I don't know. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But we say slut. And you say bitch, like, all the time. Say I'm bitches, sorry. then. What? No, because bitches is, uh, whores is, like, whore, which is, like, sex worker, which is whorephobia, which is anti-sex work. Oh, that's how I see bitches and sluts. And, uh, really? Yeah. Bitches as well. That's why I don't like bitch. Bitch I don't see in that category. Bitch, bitch is literally separately. the person that is over-promiscuous. No, bitch is over-horrible. Over That's Absolutely a horrible Absolutely not the case. This is why I really don't like that word. This is so interesting. And when you use it. Okay, fine. let's go back yeah, to that. Whatever. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah. But yeah, they're like the, the, the lefty celebs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. And they're like, they, they, you know, they have their own egos for because like a certain mainstream media loves them so much. So hence they have that ego in them and then they make all the wrong yeah. decisions as such. I don't mean it like that. I mean it like, um, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd like to think that I've applied still radical politics to a separate kind of milieu and that validated me for me to then come back to the leftist yeah. milieu and be actually like this is what oh the worries <laughs> <laughs> sorry this is reference to our yeah. last question oh, i would question. never no, use no, no, that no. sorry someone else used that and we're yeah, mocking yeah, yeah, it yeah. yes uh, <laughs> uh to think that like i'm coming from a good sense so yeah if you can basically create expertise into so- in, in something. Well, that's like the thing, because I want to jump in there, because you said you've only recently got out of your hermit hole and j- rejoined the movement. It's like, okay, I, I moved out from London for two years and I came back six months ago, and I spent my third, my first three months head down, getting to know the groundwork, getting to know what's there. And yeah, I was definitely, definitely not opinionated and like righteous and all of the things that I kind of pride myself in being for those first three months. But you were in all of the good ways. I remember Mm-mm. you. Oh, Rowan, no, you were an absolute bla- babe. No, so you like, didn't see me in my like workplace meetings. Sh- like I was silent for the first few workplace meetings. Oh, well, but 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 you weren't. A- okay, no, but that that was no. But I mean, like Clapton. No, and, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I mean, freedom. Okay, freedom. Am I on say work freedom? I work at freedom. Um, it's a it's a anarchist bookshop. You should check it out. But for the first few freedom meetings, I was silent because. But I was, that place is super fucking intimidating. But for the point is now I'm not. And so, like, what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that, like, it might take you a while on re-entering the scene to feel confident and to feel like you can speak out. And that's okay to take a while to, like, know the groundwork, get to know the key players, like, kind of do the, like, I don't know, power mapping in your head. That's a word. I, I work in NGO now. That's what I, like, I learned. Power Ooh. mapping. Yeah, it's a thing. Yeah. But that's like, like, read more Machiavelli. <laughs> yeah. But, like, the point is, like, it's okay to not immediately jump in and being like, I have an opinion, and to take time, because I definitely did that. And now, like, three months later, I'm like, I have all the opinions, and I'm always <laughs> right, and fuck you, and fuck you, and fuck you. <sighs> so, like, yeah, it's, it, it's a process, but the fact that you're aware that you want to change it means that you are definitely able to do that. You're a babe. Yeah. We love you. No, but... But you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Mm. I just, there's certain, there are certain people that ask us questions that we're, like, suspicious of, and you just seem to be a babe. But they say, like, I'm so terrified of being who I really am and blowing up every relationship I have. Is that because you have relationships with, like, problematic people? Or, like, really, like, um, you know, very unwelcoming lefties. That's the to thing, because, like, uh, like, yeah. Drop them. There's some people, yeah, that's the thing. There's some people I wouldn't necessarily speak my mind around, but they're the ones I don't want to hang out with. The ones I can hang out with is, like, me and Marianne, but they just have a... 30 second argument about whether we should say bitch or not and then go back into talking because <laughs> like do you know what i mean like we both spoke our mind and we are now still here talking to each other loving each other like like think about why you voicing your opinion would ruin those relationships because if your opinion is right and it ruins that relationship that means they're a bad person yeah if your opinion is like a possible either or and they're not willing to have that discussion with you that means they're probably a bad person uh. like you know what I mean? Like there are like th- yeah, think about the milieu you're in and yeah. if it's that unapproachable, either your opinions oh, are fucking terrible and they should tell you so or <laughs> you're with the wrong people. Yeah. And the, yeah, it just fascinates me that like you'd be in any sort of milieu where someone like doesn't necessarily not only that they don't give their opinion but they're not asked. Mm. As I'm like I don't know, like I I of definitely also hang out with people that are like a bit shy and quiet and yeah. all of that stuff but like um, first of all, I think they're comfortable around me to, to say mm-hmm. their opinion, but like, even if they're not, it's like something to do with like, just like, I don't know, you include people in the conversation, yeah, right? right? Like, if you're talking about an issue, you're like, hey, you haven't said anything, what do you think? Like, I know, I'm not about like big committee meetings, but like in a small group, pub like... Pub drinks. Pub drinks. Most anarchy politics happens in pub Rowan, drinks. like, more and more through all these questions, like, do I realise in what a lucky fucking bubble we are. Lucky bubble in terms of like comrades, not lucky bubble in terms of dating or 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 any of yeah. But or, we have like 
a small group of people we really fucking love. But all, and then we have 100%. the broader scene with which we like we still navigate. Hundred percent. And this is also only within the last year. Yeah. We are, we're now in our mid to late twenties. I'm the late twenties one. It's fine. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we. I am. This is not Mm-mm. to say that early twenties and the leftist milieu was in fucking hell. Honestly, yeah. like I am. I respect myself so much and it really shows just how like I actually have these politics that I didn't just because of the disgustedness of the some of the people that I not dropped the entirety of the politics. No, like I guess I have read enough about history and also met a few other cool anarcho syndicalists, etc. But like the scene is fucking dark. Um but yeah, don't don't necessarily just But hang on, it. upon rereading the question, they said they've started coming out the coming out of the like closet recently also about bi bi and pansexuality which we should cover but uh, also they i think we made an assumption that they've come out and started becoming openly anarchist whereas in fact they haven't they're still keeping their political views closed and so what i'm now realizing is that i think that it might harm their social relationships because their relationships they're having right now are not with people in the lefty milieu and so how to be an a pansexual anarchist with the normie friends <laughs> like we really should stop saying that with, okay, with, non-anarchi- really just the, with non-anarcho yeah. friends I mean my there's friend, my so many communities care. these days yeah and like you know like I have non-anarcho friends and they think it's like kind of they think it's like a funny rolling quirk but they don't hate me for it like no like two of my best friends are not anarchists but they're like well then again people. it depends where you're from right because like mm. I think of, I always think of like Russia where I'm going to in like a couple of weeks for three weeks and yeah we're doing oh, a hiatus right, after this show right, for sorry we're doing a hiatus after the show now. Well, maybe one before. Oh, maybe one more. Do one more, and then like. Three if you years want ago. to not miss a hiatus, get questions in the next week. Stat. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's true. I'm assuming yeah, again yeah. So, so like, like, yeah, yeah. The, the, um, why would you ever? You could never open up in those sort of environments. Mm. You're like, you're getting fucked. So, again, if we can have any sort of, if we could have had more context in terms mm. of your. Um, yeah, your region and but, that yeah, sort of but stuff. like even my non-anarchist friends don't dislike me for being either an anarchist or for being queer and so if you're scared of alienating your relationships because those people i hate to say it but hey look at eton private school the, it's like everyone gets scared <laughs> but basically like either reevaluate your friendships or trust in them more than you have we had one question recently where they said they recently came out to their friends as bisexual and their friends are all actually really lovely about it so like, yes either like trust your friends more or get better friends because there's yes. no way in which you being an anarchist or you being like pansexual should and I know, like, getting better friends is really easy to say, like, but... And if you can't do it in real life, there are online communities, I don't know where you're based, there are cities and there are groups and there are... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. No, we do, we do know. So, and also, we do go look back at our need questions, all of that stuff. Like, there's so much... Like, basically, create the worth for yourself. Yeah. And oh, I know I'm so sad, and it's like, oh, this capital is fucking done. Like, when you see I... <laughs> When I say use that word, like I earned eight thousand pounds last year, great. Like I don't think it makes me that mm. much of a capitalist. It's just I'm an expert in something that gives me some pride. Yeah. Like fuck it, do me. No, do, well, yeah, do the, me. But the last, do me. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing I would say is to speak up when friends say ugly shit. So um, I just want to use the example of one of our friends who's in a kind of community that isn't um, maybe openly lefty and radical and feminist or whatever. There is a way of kind of like calling someone out which isn't like what you just said was terrible if you can do that that is great and i could never do that but you can like call someone out through like bants you can kind of like well you wouldn't want to be that person but i have definitely done that like okay like yeah like you can be like all right dude if that's your opinion no wonder blah 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 empathy though empathy but also like yeah you can like you can like be like hey that was a dickhead thing to say without being like oh no i'm being the social justice warrior or whatever like I understand if your friendship group is maybe a little bit toxic or whatever, but there are ways of, yeah, of like engaging with that, which which don't make you seem like, oh, I'm being such a prude right now. This is really boring. Like, no, no, like, yeah, yeah. Again, it's 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 looking through the history of the sort of liberties that we have right now, and the fact that we've achieved them is only because of protests and mm-hmm. the ideas that mostly come from like radical left. So again. Yeah. The, like your mi- pension, your minimum wage, your uh, lunch break, all comes from that. So yeah, I'm gonna speak up about, about it. Mm. Babes, I have now. T- I really have to piss now. Like to the okay, point where well, I'm like not even showing my skirt line because basically it goes my boobs and it goes my like bladder. So well, I think that's the last question. I so last question. look, guys, again, share this around if you can. Give mm-hmm. us a shout out on like whatever YouTube, Twitters, Ron's Instagram, all of the stuff. Hey, like, Carlos. 
yeah what the fuck like we Please. blew up and not, did not receive a single fucking donation like, we got like i think 30 pounds before that from and, comrade though mostly yeah that's true like you know we are doing this like low budget and yeah we get called out for like our bad tech quality but like you know this is costing us like 15 pounds in booze every episode yeah like, literally so <laughs> You um, know, and like clearly so many of you are benefiting from this. I understand not all of you can contribute, but if you can and you've liked the show, like even a fiver, it yeah. Yeah. But even yeah, th- that and or if you can't can't then like subscribe, like uh, promo promo, all of that stuff. Um uh, also it's exciting. Next Sunday we're going on Radio Free Toad Back Podcast, which is a US based podcast that is sort of doing a similar thing, but it's like two dudes, which yeah. is really interesting. So it'll be like it's uh like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, Agony Aunts and Agony Uncles. Uh, so I've, I've like binge listened to a bunch of their stuff uh, the other day. Uh, mostly good. Um, no, but it's good. <laughs> Check them out. I think we go more personal all the time. Yeah. But no, actually, absolute babes. Um, That's yeah, exciting. I'm, I cannot wait to talk to them. Yeah. And yeah, again, just like two dudes. And actually, in a way, maybe more interesting to some of you is like two straight dudes. Well, no, actually, two. Yeah, they're not straight actually pretty so, queer but yeah. cool but cis dudes uh doing uh relationship advice and all that stuff we're going on the podcast so we'll give that to you as yeah. well we're, ooh possibly no no I'm not gonna reveal that one I'm not gonna go there oh no no yeah, no, no, no. Really. but okay, when well, it comes to make up but thank you so much these questions were super wonderful you are super wonderful yeah. we are super wonderful <laughs> everyone's super wonderful except bad people the parents the bullies and also all of you fuck boys out there, go yeah. fucking do one. Yeah, why don't you? Consent, lube, don't be a cop. And 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 you know, write a nice message the day after. <laughs> <laughs>